C10 Talk, episode 138. Kyle Oxberger, Metal Ox, the C10 Surgeon. Here we go, here we go. 138, Metal Ox. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to have enough work to do. And now I realize the hard part about starting this business is not getting work. It's being efficient and getting the work done and scheduling the work because... I mean, I, I avoid getting work right now, and I still can't keep it away. So, so that's a good problem to have. I, I just never would have thought it would have picked up this fast. Damn, son. When you think air suspension for your build, you think AccuAir. Whether it's the ease of their plug-and-play installation, the E-Level touchpad, or their new Endo platform, it's better by design, and it's zero compromise for you and your truck. AccuAir. If you're like me, and you want the best possible products for your build, Marquet Quality Parts has you covered, from side moldings to bedwood and so much more. Mar-K.com, and follow them on Instagram, too. When you need weather stripping for your C10, don't settle for just any brand. Seal your build right and make sure you request the best. Ask for precision replacement parts from your C10 parts supplier. Demand quality, demand precision. If you're looking for aftermarket parts for your C10 truck, Pro Performance is your go-to source. They carry the top brands for wheels, brakes, suspension, and accessories. Check them out on the web at azproperformance.com. That's azproperformance.com. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. C10 Nation. Listen up, a little metal ox, Kyle Oxberger, kicking it off. We just had Paul Hitch on, episode 137. He uh, sent me an email. If you listen to the episode, he's like, I got the coloring book, I got the builder's guide, and I had no idea there was this much stuff out there. So, obviously, it's pretty crazy. We've got uh, C10 Crew puts together their coloring book. There's like 55 different trucks and pages of coloring, you know, trucks to color. So if you haven't checked that out, you got to get that for your kids, c10crew.com, c10crew.com. Check that out. It's pretty rad. And then obviously the builder's guide uh, doesn't get any better than that. The builder's guide is jam-packed from rad builds to tech to information to vendors and everything else that we need for C10 trucks. So uh, hopefully you guys subscribe. If you don't, it's on uh, or at newsstands now, C10 Builder's Guide, and uh, pretty cool that Mr. Paul Hitch, 102 years old, is is reading through them and checking them out and uh, finding out that we got a lot of cool stuff going on in our community and, and within our trucks. So pretty rad. Uh, Metal Ox, Metal Ox, here we go. Uh, this is one of those shows that I've been looking forward to. Kyle is uh, he's as good as they get kind of uh, watched him grow in the scene I've probably known him for eh, probably right about five years him and his dad um, they've been part of part of the scene in Phoenix Kyle grew up you know one thing we just went out to Pomona and uh, Kyle was saying you know what I my dad would bring me out here when I was a kid and uh, wheel me around in these in you know one of these little uh, wagons and so Kyle's been in it. His dad raised him right, and uh, it's a good episode, and, and he's good people. He's great for the scene and, and what he's doing, and congratulations to him and his beautiful wife, Sky. They are getting ready to have their second little baby girl, so that's probably within the month here, so that's pretty exciting for Kyle. Kyle also has, you'll hear, uh, SEMA build. He has a lot going on right now, and uh, they're going to be him, Johnny G, and Cam. They're going to be in the United Pacific booth uh, Central Hall SEMA. So United Pacific, they make a lot of really cool stuff, but they do a lot of lighting. That's where, that's kind of where I see them. Uh, they had a little barbecue out in California, Long Beach. So we went out there. Uh, I kind of went out to go with Kyle and, and support Kyle and Johnny. And uh, it wasn't a big show. It wasn't, you know, something that was like just promoted or pushed. Uh, there was probably about 50 trucks there, really C10s and the community and Cali. I mean, they have it really good. You know, we're, we're lucky out here on the West coast. So, you know, you make a few calls and obviously the John father makes a few calls and there's going to be 20 trucks just like that. So good showing some people all up and down, you know, central California, uh, showed up and, uh, it was a good time. Then we rolled over to Pomona the next day, uh, Kyle and I and my son Payson and, and we had a blast. So if you ever had a chance to get out to the Pomona Swap Meet, it's it's one of the biggest and best there is. 
a lot of C10s, a lot of C10 enthusiasts, and uh, just good people, good fun. You've got the C10 Arrow was out there, GMC Avenue was out there this weekend, and uh, good food, a lot of stuff where you can you know shop for parts, and also kind of a car corral where just tons, I mean, I'd say 200 cars for sale, cars and trucks. So Pomona Swap Meet, if you ever get a chance to head out there. Uh, raffles. So I did get some response. I brought this up in episode 137. If these raffles and these giveaways, these, these trucks where you guys are donating, you know, 50, a hundred to $200 in, in hopes or a chance to win a C10, a motor something like that. If they're donating the money, then I think it's cool or the profits or, you know, a large portion of the profits, then that means the intent is, is good. I see a lot of these people that are just doing it I don't know, not a lot, but there's people doing it just to make money. So I reached out and I said, hey, let me know what you think. Um, I've got uh, a few responses back. One that I did get was an audio. So you guys can, if you've, if you've got anything, a rant, a comment, something that you think you want to share, you get on c10nation.com and to the right, there's a little thing that says uh, leave a message. All you do is click it and then uh, hopefully you got your mic turned on and you'll, you'll leave a, a, a message. So Austin Cummins, uh, he did leave a voicemail or a message, and here it is. I'm going to play it right here. For your message, Austin, you will get a shirt. So I'll email you and say, hey, what do you, what shirt do you want? And uh, you get that for, for leaving a message. It's that easy. I think it's cool because I think it's cool that I can play the, the audio on here and, uh, you know, the audience can hear it. So thanks for doing that, Austin, and uh, here's his audio message. Hi, Ronnie. My name's Austin. I uh, just wanted to weigh in really quick on the whole raffle idea. Uh, 100% with you. I, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, I, I really have a hard time standing by somebody who is going to raffle a truck off and end up getting, you know, possibly five to ten grand, depending on how many tickets are sold, more than what the truck is worth. You know, I just don't understand, you know, the whole legal side of it, too. It's really, there's a lot of gray area, this, that, and the other. If you're Donating the money to a charitable idea, uh, you know, i.e. somebody who needs it, somebody who could use it, another charity, the cancer society, something, that's one thing. I will always throw in on something that way. But if you're just getting rid of a truck that you can't sell and you figure, oh, I'm going to raffle it off, total bad idea. I think that is so wrong. Somebody should not prop it up as something that is, you know, it, it you're going to end up getting more money for what it's worth. That's just not a way to do it. If you can't sell it for what you have in it, that's part of the game. That's a hundred percent part of the game. That's what we're in this, in this industry for. That's what we do with our time. You know, it, it, you make the decision to put that much money into it and you have to sleep in the bed you make. So anyway, thanks for your time. Love the show. Love everything you do for us. Keep on rocking. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Austin. Uh, I did get another guy, Stephen Boschma. Stephen has done quite a few of these raffles, to be honest with you, and it uh, doesn't look like he's ever won. He's done some motor ones. Sweet Patina is doing a Magnuson Supercharger. I think uh, Sweet Patina is doing that for ALS. He's kind of going all over the country driving around. So that's obviously going to be a benefit. Um, he talks about uh, a few other ones. He's been in like five or six of these. So then there's one here where um, this one's kind of a bad situation. Essentially, Stephen put money in and he didn't get um, a refund because I don't think they ended up raffling off what they were supposed to. So there was a, a company that has done a few of them and they didn't end up. And it says, I understand they had a business partner rip them uh off and he took the money so i know this company had three different people and one of them was bad so that's part of the deal with these raffles that's what i don't like uh, that there's a lot of potential here i think the c10 community i think people are good and i don't think that you know there's a lot of harmful intent to take people's money i think this was a unique circumstance but there is potential there the other thing I personally don't like is that people are doing it and then they're making money. So I want to sell my C10. I want to sell it for 12,000 and it, I can't sell it for 12,000. Maybe I'm selling it for 8,000 or I can get bites at 8,000. All right. Well then I'm going to sell X amount of tickets, 120 tickets, hundred bucks a pop. I get my 12,000 and one person gets a C10. 
So if the other 99 are cool with that and you guys keep buying tickets, then I'll drop it, really. But uh, if you think there'd be a good episode or you think it'd be something you want to hear, let me know. You can leave a message on the website or shoot me an email. Right now, I didn't get that much response. I got a few, but it's it's kind of 50-50. So uh, with that being said, I'll probably just drop it unless I get a, a big rush of people saying yay or nay one way or the other. Otherwise, uh, yeah. I'll drop it. (laughs) So, uh, raffles, we talked about that. Uh, Let's go through some shows, upcoming shows. You've got uh, Scraping the Coast, June 21st through the 23rd. That's going to be in Biloxi, Mississippi. Then you've got uh, July 7th, which is kind of 4th of July weekend. You've got uh, the Brothers, 21st annual show and shine. They're excited about that. That's going to be at a new venue. Now, I did talk to John Lawrence, who who kind of helps run that for Brothers. I was out there at the Brothers show or Brothers shop the other day, picking up some parts for Orange Slice, and uh, talked to John. They're capping that at 650. So he said, "Hey, we're at 500 already. So I want to let you guys know if you're thinking about going to the Brothers 21st annual show and shine." The new park, it's like Oak something. Um, I'd have to look it up. But the new park is, uh, you know, they're going to have to cap it. And and they're excited about it. But uh, ultimately, I want to let you guys know, if you're going and you're thinking about going, just pre-register because you don't want to miss out and it get full. And then next thing you know, you're like, well, that sucks. I didn't didn't get in. So let's see here. Kind of looking through, looking for a flyer. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, It looks like it's at. Oak Canyon Park in Silverado, California. So obviously Silverado show will be limited to 650 entries. So don't wait because the show will sell out. So 650 trucks and uh, July 7th, July 13th out in Tennessee is going to be Brian Ashley and the Southeastern Truck Nationals. So that's uh, the ninth anniversary for that show. That's probably, well, that's the biggest C10 show east of the Mississippi. Mr. Ashley has, has assured me of that one. So if you're out there, Tennessee, I think it's going to be huge this year because I've, I've heard of other guys all over going to that show. So that will be a big, big show. Let's see here. Camp and Drag, that's July 19th through the 21st. That's in Indiana. Camp and Drag. Slamboree, August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. That's in Shawnee, Oklahoma. And then August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th as well, Carlisle Truck Nationals. That's in uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, so all the way east coast. I know uh, CPP's a sponsor on that one, so Carlisle Truck Nationals. August 10th, there's two shows that weekend as well. You've got the uh, Southeastern Square Body in Georgia, Southeastern Square Bodies in Georgia. And then up in the Pacific Northwest, up in Washington, Olympia, the capital, C10's at the capital. That's uh, Todd and Jen run that. That's Pacific Northwest underscore C10, so PNW. I looked them up on uh, Instagram. That's uh, C10s at the Capitol. And then Slamley Reunion, August 18th through the 19th, and that's in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So tons and tons of shows going on, a lot, a lot happening, and uh, it's good. Good all summer. Hell, and honestly, right after that, we're all the way up to August, September. You've got, uh, we'll be headed up to the intervention, the uh, C10 intervention up in Auburn, California. We're going to be heading there. That's uh, that's my my due date for Orange Slice. And then we're going to try to turn around. I mean, we are. We're going to turn around and then go the next weekend right to Texas. So uh, we're going to be logging some miles that week, that weekend. And honestly, I'm going to try to go from Texas, go over to Oklahoma and stop by Marquet. And then I really, really want to go by Nebraska and see Big Fish. So I've got a lot going on that at that time. We'll see how it all shakes out. But uh, speaking of Orange Slice, this interview, I took my bedsides up to see Kyle and uh, it's happening. It's going to be fun. I've gotten a little bit of flack. Hey, bottom line is there's a lot of long beds. I, I dig long beds when they're four-wheel drive, especially square body long beds. I don't know what why you'd say the difference. I like 67, 72 long beds as well in, in a four-wheel drive. But, uh, you know, two-wheel drive long beds. Yellowstone's a long bed. be honest with you, when I got it, yeah, I was going to cut it down. And uh, El Dino, the, uh, the big man himself, hey, cat, you got to leave it long. So I listened, and then I just went low, and then from there I was like, all right, I got an idea. I'm going to put a camper on this son bitch, and we're going to make freaking Yellowstone. And we did, and it, and it worked. And it's still a long bed. Uh, but uh, I dig a short bed, you know, a little sportier truck, and I think Orange Slice is going to look pretty bitching when it's all said and done. 
a little uh, ride tech suspension. I got US uh, mags wheels, you know, kind of the indie hauler there. They're they're gonna just look so cool. 2022s. We've got uh, let's see here. We've got uh, the Revelator brakes, and uh, we're gonna just clean it all up. It's it's gonna be a lot of fun. So stay tuned on Orange Slice. Kyle Oxberger, Metal Ox, Metal Ox Mafia. If you've had your truck shortened by Kyle, then you're you're part of the mafia. And I'm stoked that uh, he's doing my truck for me. I appreciate it. Kyle Oxberger doesn't get any better than that. You guys have a great week. Do what you do. Stay out of trouble. Please rate and review the show. Take the time to let everybody know about it. Your mama, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your daddy. I don't care. Your girlfriend's boyfriend or your boyfriend's girlfriend. Tell them about C10 Talk. Let them know. You're wrenching. You're driving. You're listening. Late. Metal Ox. What up, buddy? How's it going, buddy? C10 Talk. We're on location. We're at the Metal Ox Fab Factory. And uh, I'm looking at a big window, 6456. Some bedsides. I'm looking at a 6768. Long to short. Both of these are long to short conversions. Just brought some orange slice bedsides up. And we're hanging out with my buddy, Kyle, Metal Ox. I got some questions. I got some answers. Okay. Did it pick you up there? Try it again. Let's see. Check uh, one. Check one. Check. All right. It's just saying right for some reason, but hmm. I wonder, is it on the eight setting? The one that's like uh, back and forth, eight? Yeah. So why isn't it picking you up more? Put it on the... Let me set your lap. Put it on the zero. <laughs> Put it on the zero. That's with the mic setting. How's that? Well, it looks pretty good. We're going with it. Better? For some reason, the left, it's like it's not picking up the left. Let's go with it for a second here and see what it does. We're here. We're up in uh, Peoria, Arizona, which even though people think that, you know, oh, you're from Phoenix, it's still an hour and a half from my house. He's on one side of the valley and I'm on the other. So, who's Metalox? Tell us about uh, who Kyle is. I'm just a dude with a welder and a cutoff wheel. <laughs> just <laughs> a dude. Just a dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The C10 surgeon, the C10 cut man. Uh, you're like Dexter for trucks. I yeah. think you're more than just a dude with a welder and a cutoff wheel. Yeah, you know, it was never really intended to open my own shop or anything. It kind of just came to be like everything in my life. So, Cameron, who's my partner... He uh he fought, he works right down the road from me, and I was daily driving a little seventy two that I'd cut down the first truck I ever did. Which at the time when I met you for the first time, that truck was still a long bed. So that's how far we mean you go back. I was nothing, and C ten talk was about episode ten, and uh, I started listening to that show episode ten. And someday I knew I was gonna be on the show. It's pretty cool that here we are, and now we're like buds and everything. It's pretty pretty rad. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> so. So Cam, he runs a little tent shop down the road, and I've always worked at the dealerships doing collision work, and that's kind of where I started cutting cars up. Um, so he followed me into work one day because he noticed the bed's cars on my truck, and he just picked up his 69 truck, the Grinch, which was just in street trucks. It's a green, sea foam, 69 on transits, roadster shop chassis. But anyway, and he built that truck, and he's built several other cars too. He's super detail-oriented. He built some badass shit. So, anyways, uh, Cam follows me to work. Uh, me and him start talking. I cut down his truck, the Grinch. That's the second truck I ever did. And then from there, he referred me a couple more jobs. And then, uh, you know, just kind of grew from there. So I was just doing the short bed conversions at night and weekends at the body shop. I had a really cool boss, and, you know, he gave me keys to the shop, and I was constantly there just doing side work. So... Uh, so your first your first long to short was your white truck. Yeah, that first white seventy two. Now, did you tell us about walk us through that? You know the the measurements, the looking, the cutting, the deciding of where, and then two part. I don't even know that I can ask a one part question. And then how much has that changed that recipe from the first cut? So I'm obviously not the first guy to ever cut down a truck. You know, I think I probably cut down more trucks than anybody else. I don't know how many that number is, but guys like Brandon Cisco, he definitely inspired me. 
and I've definitely looked at every short bed conversion I could on forums and seen how everybody else did it, and I just kind of put my own spin on it. And uh, the cut lines on the first truck I ever did are the same as they are today. You know, the, I spent a lot of time measuring the first one, and I'm very happy with the way I do it. And, uh, you know, that's still the way we do them today. Would you say that your seam is a little smaller? Yeah, we have smaller seams. And, like, you know, Brandon Cisco, he was cutting them very similar to the way I cut them. You know, he was my main inspiration on how I mapped out my first one. And um, my seam in the back, you know, I did a little different with that slant where it goes around the stake pocket in the rear cut to kind of uh, compensate for that tapered body line on the back. But, um, yeah, I mean, we keep the seams tight and, you know, weld them hot and fast and very little panel distortion and very little paint burning. We've really got our welding dialed in on how we do it. And, uh, yeah, now it's like a factory. I mean, I can do it with my eyes closed. So you, you look back, and I'm trying to think, so would that be... Three and a half, four years ago? Yeah, about, about then. About so then. so you did it. Was it hard to make the cut? The first ones were, you know. Um, you know, in the in the collision industry, I fixed a lot of, in the collision industry, we call them train wrecks. That's when stuff's hitting, like, really hard. So I've, I've had cars cut so far apart, you wouldn't even recognize them. So, like, I was never really afraid to cut my truck in half. But definitely a lot more careful care and planning went into the first ones and they took me forever like it used to take me two weeks to cut a bed size and now i can do a set in two days like i've really shaved it down and have it dialed in now what about the difference for so you cut your first one which was your own which is really cool that that's how you you popped your cherry then how about the pressure of the first like paid customer that comes to you and says i want you to cut this truck that was definitely a huge transition for me because I put, you know, I can't be happy with myself unless other people are happy with what I'm doing. So I really put a lot into trying to do the best work I can. And um, it was kind of a smooth transition, though, because I never really was, like, out searching for work. It all kind of came to me. And Cameron, who at the time I didn't even know him, but he was my first job, and we just did some trade work for it. And me and him became really close friends. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of one job at a time. So... Like I said, they used to take me a lot longer. I spent a lot more time on them, but now they come out better and way faster. Cool. So you, I think you kind of said it, but jump ahead a few questions. Do you know how many you've cut? I could probably sit down and figure it out, but it's got to be like 70s, 80-ish range on how many trucks I've cut down. So let me, let me throw this out to you. As a friend and somebody who's a little older, quite a bit older, you're going to regret that you – don't do it. So do it now. Take the time. I know you don't have a lot of time, but try to figure that out and make a list so that when you go back someday, you can say almost not to be like, oh, I've cut 500 trucks, but more of a, like, a, I don't know, it's kind of a cool history or a diary of, you know, this is how many, my dad or just anybody to say, yeah, this is like an old school. How about like this? When you look at grandpa's, you know, you buy an old C10 and you look through that old book and it has notes of the oil change and so on and so forth, does it really matter? It doesn't. You're going to buy the truck, but it's cool. And to just write it down, every every five that goes, it's going to be that much harder to, A, remember or find the time. So I think if you make it, if you can sit down and on your iPhone notes or something. I, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, at this point, I probably could go back and remember everyone I've done and I, with pictures. And then also in my backyard right now, I have a long bed sitting in the dirt, and it's probably got about 70% of the trucks I've cut down to pieces. So i got a big mountain of cut-out pieces. One of these days, I'll make something out of it. Like so I've seen you something. post that, and obviously I've seen the pile. What What is your plans for that pile of, of cool bedside scrap? You know, uh, maybe I'll make a desk out of it someday or something. I don't know. I, I mean, I definitely crossed my mind just to call a scrapper and have him come get it out of my yard. But I, I don't know. For whatever reason, I can't throw them away. I just keep piling them up. Yeah, it'd be cool. Like, because it's uh, calico, it's a rainbow of so much character and different bed sides. Yeah, that... exactly. There's all, a bunch of cool colors and patina. and They got a good look to them. Cool, cool panels for sure. Do it. Go back. So, so we're going to throw out maybe 70, uh, that, which is really crazy to think. Um, 
and we'll talk about the transition from when you left the body shop to now your own shop. One of the questions that I don't know if people realize this or not, um, but you're also, who is C10 Acres as well? So C10 Acres, um, that's kind of what we named my dad's backyard. So my dad's a C10 guy. He, he's a car guy. He's a hot rodder. He always has been. That's part of the reason why I do what I do. But um, so anyways, he's, he's got a big yard. It's like your yard. He's got some acreage. And he probably has about, at the time, C10 Acres was developed or whatever, conceived. It was uh, one of his buddies came by, and he probably had about 20 trucks in the backyard. And he's like, dude, you better name this place C10 Acres. What's going on here? So it just kind of stuck. And then that's where I started my first Instagram, C10 Acres. And uh, the only reason I started that is because listening to your podcast, I wanted to see the trucks everybody's talking about. Because I was never a big social media guy. Like, even when I was in high school, it was MySpace, and I, I never was into that. But anyways, so then, you know, you get in the thing. My Instagram grew, and then uh, kind of, I mean, that's where all my business really came from. I mean, it's to the point now where if I post a picture with bedsides, I'll get at least 10 to 15 DMs, people inquiring about getting it done. And, you know, people think, and I don't get back to everybody in the DMs. It's crazy, like. It's one guy, and you got email, DMs, two Instagrams. You get ba get back to as many people as you can, but it's crazy how many people inquire. And the other thing, too, about DMs is it waste a lot of your time because everybody's got questions, but people are actually going to drive across the country to bring you bedsides and, you know, pay up between the people just asking, you know. Well, that brings us to probably one of the coolest stories that between the three of us would be Bryce and you and I, and I think somehow – through me posting and then you and then Bryce reaching out and, and Bryce drove all the way from Oklahoma, spends like a weekend here. You cut down his truck, that truck. Then we go back to Texas. We had uh, that truck in our booth at LST two years ago. So that would have been LST 18 because it's at the beginning. And then it was also in my booth at uh, C10 Nationals last year. And that, that was kind of a cool truck because that was his grandpa's truck. Is that the craziest bring your bedsides to you story? Probably because that truck ended up in your booth twice. And, you know, it's going to hit all the big shows this year. It looks like you just got it running. So it's going to hit the scene this year for sure. But, I mean, I've had people drive all the way out from Michigan. And I've had people send them from Maryland. Like, it's crazy what people are willing to do to get their bedsides cut by me. It's, it's really an honor. Like, I would have never thought. Like, I won't drive to East Mesa to your side of town to go look at a part if it's cheap, let alone drive halfway across the country Yeah, just to have people, a bed cut down. So that's Bryce Ingram's. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I can, you know, link him over, but you can just pull it up. He's got, uh, it's like Pops is, uh, was it 78? And it's, it's green on green. It's a really nice truck. So Maryland, and so I, that was one of my questions, how far has somebody shipped their, their uh, bedsides to you? I think Maryland's probably the farthest. So Maryland and Michigan are two of the... Yeah, and then we've had several from Texas, some from the Carolinas. How do they do that? They ship them up, and just like I brought you Orange Slices bedsides, they... Yeah, they crate them up and ship them out. Um, what does guys, that run? So the guys, like, it's re it's outrageous if you just try to go standard shipping. But if you, you know, talk to a local business that ships out heavy freight, like a transmission company or heavy equipment repair where they ship constantly shipping heavy freight like on a loading dock. If you go into them and see if they'll like sneak you in on one of their orders, you can usually get them shipped for like three to four hundred bucks. That's but you, you got to build the crate. Yeah. So I can see where guys are. That might be the one of the videos that everybody wants Kyle to do is how to cut my bedsides, which we've joked about that. I know Stoner is always giving him a hard time, but we we uh, we tell them to do a little jig or something that you can buy, but then unfortunately that'll probably get resold a few times over. It needs to be one that once you use it, you have 25 days to use it, and then it disappears. You can bust. Yeah, because <laughs> what was my train of thought there? I was thinking about how tos. Oh, uh, a video of how to build a crate. We might have to, you know, something where <laughs> there you go. Here, here, <laughs> how to that's going to be on the on the website or his Insta Wiener is. Uh, is going to be a how-to to to build, package, and send bedsides from uh, afar with yeah. a coupon code. 
You'd have to do that video. I can't build anything out of wood. I can't build a speaker box. <laughs> the guy can, the guy I can, can make cut it out of anything, metal. but he can't do anything out of wood. So <laughs> that might be the opposite. I might be the wood guy. I could build that, and you could do the be the cut guy. But so that's pretty cool. So Michigan and Maryland, um, that's actually crazy. What what is the price right now on the time frame? Um, depends on the condition of the bed sides and the generation. You know, we we do all of them. Um, from 60 to 87, and we've also done some Fords too, F100s. Uh, but for two sides on a C10, it's between a thousand and twelve hundred. Which I mean, isn't it crazy to think like looking back when you were doing them at the shop, and then you were like, I think I'm going to go out on my own. You went out on your own, and now you're the most sought after long to short bed guy, at least bedside. Yeah, I think so, man. That's it's crazy. I, I never thought there would be this kind of demand for it. Or that many people, or that many long beds, even to cut down. But there's so many of these trucks. I mean, I could start cutting now and never get through them all. Yeah, I wonder. You know, like you said, your your DM gets full, your email, everything. How many? How how much are you backlogged? And like like explain that to us, kind of where you're at with that. So backlog. I mean, big work. We we won't take any big work right now. We we've got two trucks in the shop now that were just short bed conversions, and now they've kind of turn into full builds. Um, one of them is going to SEMA. We'll talk about that later, I'm sure. And then we got this white truck that Ronnie mentioned at the beginning. But as far as bedsides, um, if you're just bringing me bedsides and you take it all apart and everything, I can always get those in. It's usually about four to five week right now, wait on them, turnaround time. And I just do those in between all the big work we're doing. But um, yeah, it's about that. I mean, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll even do a full truck conversion, but you definitely have to schedule that out. But that's constantly changing. I mean, we're a small shop. We got me, Johnny G, and Cameron. And, uh, you know, I'm the only one back here full time. Cameron runs a tent shop, and then Johnny G, you know, he's always doing his thing. So, but they definitely help me out. So, yeah. so, so we can, it can be one week and we can be booked. I mean, big jobs were booked out for the next year and a half. Did you ever think that, did you ever have a goal when you left, uh, the collision industry to be, uh, full blown? I mean, for the audience, these are full blown to the hilt. I mean, this is the, this is the real deal. I mean, you've got one truck that is right behind him as we sit here today and it's to the nines. Uh, it's probably one of the cleanest 64s, five sixes that I've seen just from it getting here. And now what you're doing to it is it's pretty radical. Yeah. You know, if I was smart, I would have just stuck to the smaller jobs. And, you know, I'm still learning this. We've only been open for a year and a half. So, and, and both of these big jobs we have in here just started off as just a typical short bed conversion. But, um, you know, I'd probably make more money if I just did sat here and did bed size all day. But I'm, I'm uh, definitely happy to be doing these bigger builds. I get to be more creative. And uh, kind of like Ronnie said at the beginning, like we, we hit a lot of details, a lot of stuff on these trucks you're not going to see. But we really try to make the fit and finish on all our metal work like, top notch and super clean and everything looked like it was meant to be that way so in the beginning I, I did I was worried I wasn't going to be able to have enough work to do and now I realize you know the hard part about starting this business is not getting work it's being efficient and getting the work done and scheduling the work because I mean I, I avoid getting work right now and I still can't keep it away so, so that's a good problem to have I, I just never would have thought it would have picked up this fast yeah and so right now you're Four to five weeks out on a bedside setup, how many do you have right now? Like, how, how many backlogged are you? Right now, we got we got four sets in my possession right now. So, But I'll have all of those done within the next six, seven weeks, yeah. including the orange slice that you just dropped off. I'll have that one back in probably two weeks. And, and we're going to do the, the frame on that because he is so busy, so I'm just going to do the frame myself. Plus, I want to do it. I've done a 60. I did a 71. Um, and that's one of my questions for you kind of jumping is when you do the frames, what's your method for, what do you prefer doing a frame on a short bid conversion? Um, so straight cut 45 or Z we straight cut and fish plate. I mean, that's the way they section tractor trailers. So, I mean, that's the way we do it here. People get creative with their cuts and they put, you know, six feet of weld in a 24 inch section of the frame. I just think it's kind of senseless. I think where the seam is sectioned, it just needs to be a little bit stronger than the rest of the frame. It doesn't need to be 10 times stronger than the rest of the frame. It's kind of pointless in my eyes. And I mean, I've had trucks 
that I've driven across the country with my, that have been sectioned by me, and I'm 100% behind how I do it. I would tow with them, load them up just like it were factory short beds. And a lot of times people will say, you know, just from the experience of when I did my 71, I did the Z cut, and they will say, and then it was fish plated. So fish plate uh, for the audience means kind of like a diamond uh, goes in uh, the inner frame stiffener? Yeah, you know, it can be, everybody has their own take on how they cut them and what shape they think is the strongest. Uh, we do kind of like a, a five-sided shape. Um, we feel it ties it together the best. And uh, like I say, I mean, when you put these crazy Z-cuts, they're putting so much heat in the frame in that section of frame that, you know, just beyond the frame, they're probably making it weaker. Well, and that's it initially was because they're putting so much weld into that section of the frame that's not necessary. Well, that's what I've heard that you actually make that frame that part very strong, but then it can make the other part weak. So that's a balance of of okay, this this is really strong right where I cut it and I seamed it and I fish plated it, but now depending on the heat, other parts of the frame are weaker that weren't as weak as they are now. Exactly, you know, it needs to be fifty percent stronger, not two hundred fifty percent stronger, whatever. Well, I think if you tell me a straight cut is fine, then I'm going to do a straight cut. But before, right now, I would have said I'm a Z guy all day long because that's the only thing that I've done. And my research just showed me that, and it made sense to me, to the yin and the yang and it going together. Brothers makes a really nice, you know, little template that is a, that they are, it's a straight cut. Yeah, exactly. And we've actually done a couple of Brothers kits. Uh, we like them. Anybody... I've recommended to them to guys that just want to have me do the bed and save some money on their end because it does get quite a bit more expensive if I have to do the whole truck. You know, you're looking at more like five to six thousand for a complete conversion. Just because, I mean, we, by the time you take apart all those rusty bolts, I mean, we're doing a lot of like just grunt labor that somebody can do in their driveway if they're trying to do it on a budget. But that brother's kit, I mean, even a guy that doesn't really know what he's doing can still do a, do a short bed conversion in a weekend on the frame. Yeah, I mean, you really, you need a sawzall. A reciprocating saw is probably one of the biggest things that you'll need. Um, and you can even, it, it bolts together with that brother's kit. So you can just bolt it together and then drive the truck to a muffler shop if it's down the road and have them weld it. So you don't even need a welder to do that kit. You know, it's, it's pretty slick. So how many frames do you think you've done that have come in? Um, did you have any of those before when you were at the old shop? Yeah. Besides yours? No, no, I definitely cut down full trucks at the shop. So, uh, I did the bomb 53s. That's, I've done several others, but that was one of the ones I did at the old shop. And, uh, so basically, like, short bed conversions were my side job then, and they're kind of my side job now, because my day job is working on these big builds, and then all the short bed work I get is, you know, that's my side job. <laughs> so, uh, nights and weekends, I'm knocking out the bedsides. And are you doing some of those at home, or are you doing them all here? No, I do them all here. Yeah. I, I'm pretty much here most every day. Even if I'm just here for a couple hours, just to, you know, stack my bricks for the day. We were uh, we were saying before Cam was here earlier, and we were saying that Kyle needs some sort of like, um, kind of like a dumb waiter or the carpet thing at Home Depot that <laughs> you can. You know the wire. The best thing would probably be the wire thing. You know how the wire thing it spools up and it rotates up. So it's kind of like a old school Ferris wheel or the thing at the county fair that goes up and comes back down. We need to make, because there's a lot of square footage at the shop here, but some of it's not used because it's up high. We need to make like a, a kind of a rotating bedside distribution thing because he's got them and he has to kind of lean them up against the wall, including the tailgates. So depending on how they come in, the trucks that, that are here, they're full trucks. So they've got the bed, the floor, uh, they've got the, uh, you know, the tailgate. And, and that kind of made me think of something. What about the bed floors? Uh, guys are shipping out the two sides to you. What are you, what are you telling them on the bed, on the bed floors? Because that's nothing secret. So some guys, a lot of guys that are cutting down just their bed sides, I mean, most of these trucks end up on chassis these days. So they have to raise their floor, build a custom floor anyway, so they don't care. Or if it's a wood floor truck, I mean, that's going to be all rotted out anyways, and a short bed wood kit will go right in a cut down set of bed sides. So that's why mostly what we do is bed sides overall in the conversions just because some people don't care. But we do cut floors here. Um, I'm sure I've had guys cut them that I haven't cut. I've just done the sides for them. Because obviously you don't have to worry about like working the metal and it's not an exterior panel. So, you know, it's not as big as a risk doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we'll do on Orange Slice. I don't know if we'll... I'll probably come out to your house and do that before we got your house. 
All right, that's fine. I'm not going to turn you down on that. I mean, I could plasma it, or I could uh, just I'll, I'll just wheel it. So once I bring you these bedsides, we'll just uh, we can have that that floor cut and the bed reassembled in a day, easy. So we'll just spend a Saturday out there and get yeah, it and uh, we did a little bed that was 55 bolts. Is how many I counted. Now we got to see how much less there is. I've never counted. That was that was well. It should be the same. Oh no, because now we're cutting. Yeah, out. yeah. It would probably be. We're probably only cutting out like four bolts or something. Oh man, I w- I'm gonna guess two on each side. Yeah. Yeah. So probably yeah, right. two. Because everything on else side. on the back is the same. Everything else on the front is the same. It's really just the sides that. Yeah. It's only gonna. I. It would be at max four, or at max six, but probably four. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. I guess we'll let you guys know. I'm not going to take any guesses on that. No free T-shirts on that deal. <laughs> um, so you got the full builds. You got two builds going in here. You're about five weeks out on bed sides. I need to get you my buddies because he's he's been telling me about that. What's the funnest part about doing these builds for you? Marque has been in business for over 40 years. It all started in the original owner's garage. From humble beginnings of a couple parts in a garage to a two-building manufacturing facility making over 6,000 parts, Marque has grown to be one of the country's premier truck parts manufacturers. They not only design the products, but also design the tooling to build the products, guaranteeing quality control. They have made their original parts from the original trucks. Aluminum strips are double polished, creating a mirror finish and crystal clear anodized. They use the highest quality, hand-selected, show-quality wood that will hold up over time. Why? Because it's kiln-dried to precision moisture levels specifically for Marque. They stock oak, pine, and mini exotics, guaranteeing extremely fast delivery. All parts are manufactured in-house in Oklahoma City, USA. They offer quality parts built by Americans for old American-made trucks. So when you're looking for body moldings, bed strips, bed wood, and so much more, think Mar-K. That's mar-k.com. Travis from Pro Performance here. I started this company over five years ago in order to truly do what I love. I get to help the C10 Nation on a daily basis with their builds and be involved in the C10 community. My goal is to provide the best customer service possible with product from the top companies in the industry like Chop and Block, Dakota Digital, AccuAir. Give us a call. Try us out. Let us know how we can help you on your project and put together the right parts to complete your dream truck. We are your one-stop shop for all aftermarket C10 parts. Check us out on the web at azproperformance.com to see all that we carry or even on our social media pages, which is Instagram, Facebook, and our Facebook group, C10 Addiction. Let us know you heard about us from C10 Talk, and we'll include a free shirt for any new customer with a purchase over 150. Look forward to hearing from you guys. What's the funnest part about doing these builds for you? It's, you know, it's really fun doing the big builds. It's, uh, it's a lot more headache and a lot more stress, not when you're working on the trucks, but... You know, it gets expensive and, you know, you got to build the customers like bi-weekly because it's easy to have, you know, you can have 10 hours wrapped up in smoothing out the inside of a fender and it's something a lot of guys aren't going to see, but at the end of the day, the fit and finish on the trucks can be that much better. So it's definitely tough and it's like a big pillow swallow when you got to build these guys and it, it costs a lot, but I have to charge that much because that's how much time it takes me, and, you know, shop we got overhead now and shop supplies and it just adds up, so... I like doing the big builds better, but it's definitely more stressful. Do you feel like, because I can see you undervaluing your time, not your ability, you're the type of guy that's like, oh, I'll just, you know, and so when, like you said, the pill to swallow, is that where you like, you're like, dude, I got to bill him, you know, 15 hours for this times, you know, 80 to 120 an hour, whatever shop rate is, you know, and then you're like, and you're like, dude, I don't know that I – am I going to charge him that much? You know, and I could see you kind of being like – Well, it, it's tough for a lot – I'm sure a lot of builders go through this. I can do all this myself. So I don't even factor into the cost of it because I've always looked at it for me building a truck myself. It's nothing to me to fabricate. It's it's what I do. So but when you, you know, look at it on paper, it's like, yeah, this, sh- this shit takes time. And the stuff I do – I mean, there's a reason stuff's here is because people can't do some of the stuff I do in their garage. And, um, or they don't have the ability. Well, yeah, they don't have the ability or the time or, you yeah. know, I, you know, I've got hundreds of thousands of hours in practice getting to where I am to do what I can do. But I, you know, I keep it real straight up with the billing, you know, 
every day I clock in how many hours I worked on every project and you know QuickBooks is makes business easy for a newcomer like me you know just add it up but um I think that do you think that that's a big challenge I think what I see here is you have two customers who are awesome customers yes totally awesome customers and I know the truck that was in here before he's an awesome customer yeah Micah yeah Micah Smith he, he's a He's got that truck now. I just did the metal work on it, but he's he's putting it. So together. that truck, just to kind of, if you follow Kyle, you follow Metal Locks, they did a lot of the, the cool stuff that, that they did that would kind of be different for you to kind of, in a description base for the pod, is it was a 6772 where they leaned the gauge cluster back. Uh, well, you tilted it, I guess. Yeah, we, we tilted it at the bottom of it forward, towards, towards you, yeah. towards the driver so you can see it. And it's like more of a cockpit feel because it's a little more exaggerated. It's not such a flat dash. And then they did the same thing on the glove box to kind of give it the match. So a lot of little things that Kyle does, and that was in here before. So so you have a good client base, but I almost feel like we're in the transition with C10s. This will always be the C10 problem, or maybe not always, but that's where we're at now, is where guys that have money, they, you know, I look at it like my, like spot on my my age, okay, a guy could be had been very successful now. He's 45. He's kicking butt. He always wanted that C10. He wanted that 64. He wanted that 72. He's he's working hard. He's in his career, and he's like, I'm gonna pay this guy. But then I see other guys who are more, you know, blue collar. They're out there, and if, if you tell them it's $100 an hour, $120 an hour, whatever shop time, they're like, Are you kidding me? And so, it's a good thing. But that's where we're at, where it's like the old hot rod era. It's like these are these are it now. We're, we're blessed that the C10s are absolutely. I've said it, you've said it, the C10 Nation has said it. We are at the pinnacle of these trucks. They're they're as popular as they've ever been. I'm not going to say they're they're not going to get more popular. I don't imagine that they are, but they are as popular as they have ever been right now. Absolutely, and there's so many of them out there. And, you know, if you want a truck that's going to be really different than everybody else's truck, I mean, you have to take it somewhere and get metal work done like we're doing. And, it, you know, these big builds we got going on have kind of snowballed. Like, they were just short bed conversions. But then it's like, hey, let's move this out a little bit. Let's move this around. And then it kind of, you know, they come from a patina truck to a painted truck to, you know, full chassis. Like, it really, really snowballs. But, I mean, people are putting $100,000 into a $3,000 long bed body. Like, who would have thought? A couple of years ago, these were thousand dollar trucks. Yeah, and now like, you know, my landscaper drives a square body, and Joey Ezzy's just sold for one hundred seven thousand dollars. Like, there's never been a bigger spectrum of value on something than a C10 pickup. And that's a great point, based upon the metal is is the canvas around it, but right behind Kyle right now is a full porter built chassis with a diesel motor in it, six L ninety. Every bell and whistle possible from the brakes, the wheels, the, everything's in it. Uh, so that's what's different than your landscaper's truck. That's what's different than yeah, SSO. Exactly. One. It's just you know the shell. I mean? It's, it's, it's the body that we all love. It's a race car, a sports car, a custom car, a hot rod, you know, underneath it. Do you feel one thing you said was, you know, when you build these trucks, there's so many of them out there that you're going to do something different and metal fab is usually where you're going to see that do you feel as a metal fab guy do you ever feel like i've got to come up with something different for this build yeah always you know we always try to do everything a little bit different just because everything's been done on these trucks and a lot of stuff we do to these trucks may never get noticed cause at the end of the day you know it's going to be shiny on big wheels and it's going to be a cool truck but it's the little details when you pop the hood and open the door jams and stuff like that but um yeah, I mean, it's definitely in the details. I don't think, I like the guys that go extreme with the stuff, like extensive and stuff. Like, I like the guys that really push it and go all the way. I like to keep it a little bit more factory looking, but still, I guess, I like a truck to look like if somebody didn't know the trucks, they think that's how it would be. But anybody who really knows the truck know that it's been extensively modified, if that makes sense. That's kind of like where I like to keep it. Well, so, so it's far from stock, but it still looks like it could have been factory. Well, and I'll add to that, based upon what I've seen before and what you've even shown me today on the 68, there's things that people are never going to see because you can't see them. 
the things that you've done. Yeah. And there's certain perspectives that it's going to be really hard to get. You could show them. You could put it on a rack. You could, you know, and you're like, oh, my God, I never thought about that. Or, you know, even if a C10, it's just factory smoothness. It's, it's, it's metal lock smoothness. It's, it's all bringing it together and finding, taking those, those things that were already taken to a high level you're taking it even higher. You're like the Tony Hawk of, of, of custom <laughs> fab. You guys are doing the, what is it? The 980? <laughs> 720's gone. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, Kim and Johnny G are doing the 980 right now over here at Metal Ox Fab, but, um, really, really high end stuff. You guys are kicking butt. At what point did you know, you know, to jump off that, that cliff and say, Metal Ox is going out on its own? So a couple of things happened all at once. So Cameron, like I talked about earlier, he runs a tent shop down the road, and his shop was very successful. He was subleasing um, some space in a shop next door to where we are now, a muffler shop, which I actually worked at that muffler shop next door when I was 15 years old. And it was right here? Right here. I did not know that. So I worked there when I was 15 years old, under the table, welding mufflers on cars. And that's really where I started welding. But uh, anyways, crazy, I'm back here right next door. So Cam was subleasing from that muffler shop. And uh, his business was growing, and he needed to—he needed more space. And then the unit next door became available, and uh, you know it was doubling his square footage. And me and him had talked back and forth. You know, I was doing a lot of side work for a lot of guys, and he knew like I was kind of ready to go on my own. Maybe I didn't even know it, but Cameron, you know, he looked out for me. And uh, so, anyways, he gave me the opportunity to sublease some of his shop from him since he was expanding, to kind of help him out a little bit because he was unsure on how his business was going to grow, which it did grow. Like, he could kick me out of the shop right now, no problem. He's killing it with his tent shop. But um, so it kind of just was like a nice, smooth transition. You know, Cameron gave me an opportunity to get a really low rent in a really good part of town and uh, right down the street from where I've always worked. You know, I've worked on this street since since '04, and I'm still <laughs> just the dealerships up and down the road from here. And then I'm still here, so so it kind of worked out great. And then, um, and we're we're close to Kyle's house. We're far from my house, but we're we're close to home, not too far. We're by some dealerships, so it's kind of like if you think of an industrial park, uh, right on the really across the street from some dealerships. So that's where they get a lot of their work. Not Kyle, but like Cam and the muffler shops and the customization stuff. We're we're close to you know automotive industri- industrial area. Yeah, I worked at a, a Volkswagen Audi dealership right down the street, just fixing new cars that were in collision wrecks. And uh, you know, Cameron has to be close to the dealers because most of what he does is brand new, brand new car dealer work, tent jobs and career brawls. How, how did you go from the muffler shop? How did you a become a welder in a muffler shop, and then how did you get into collision work? So the shop, shop next door, uh, used to be called Pro Muffler. It's now called Performance Muffler. It's got a new owner, which is still the same family, but uh, the guy now that's doing work over there, he's really killing it. Places, their quality and this type of stuff they're doing, custom TIG welded work. They do all our exhausts. But anyways, so I worked there back in the day for this guy's brother, and uh, my dad had a Nova he brought in to get some exhaust done on it, a car he just built. And, uh, you know, the floors, the shop was a fucking mess, you know, you know, dust in the corners. He's like, hey, you need somebody in here to clean this place up. You got to hire my son. And he's like, all right, I need a guy. I need a guy to weld. And he's like, well, and I thought I was just be sweeping floors, but I, I was welding the first day there. He just wanted a welder. And did you know how to weld? Uh, you know, a little bit. You know, I like I cut up bicycles and stuff when I was, and and I actually, so in high school I had a S10 Blazer. I was in a mini trucking for a minute, and I bagged that thing, and I learned how to weld on that. And uh, I cut up like bicycles and stuff, and made choppers out of them when I was a kid. So I've always kind of welded, but that's where I was like really doing like daily repetitive welding. And um, so I worked there for a summer, and then um, after that, I ended up working at AutoZone, which is also right down the street from here. And we had a guy come in. I helped him out. With, you know, I, I was the youngest kid there at the AutoZone, but I actually knew a lot about cars. So I helped him out, get a part for his car. He's like, hey, you got to come get a job at my dealership we work at, uh, Larry Miller Body Shop. We need a guy, a young guy like you. So I went in and interviewed. This is the first time, or you, he had come in a few times? Yeah, he had come in a couple times. I always helped him out because I was the only guy at the parts counter that actually knew parts. So he's like, hey, you need to come work at our shop. So I went in, interviewed, um, and then basically I got hired on the spot. 
And uh, they said, where do you want to work? Do you want to be in the office? Do you want to be a body guy? you want to learn how to be a body guy? And I was uh, apprehensive to be a body guy because I thought if I was working on cars every day that I would lose the passion for it and not want to work on it at home. So I went the office route. And then after a couple of months of working in the office, like all the body guys, you know, they're like working class guys. So they all had like diesel trucks, sand rails. And I was like, I want to hang out with these guys. What am I doing hanging out with these office nerds? So I transitioned into the shop working for a guy named Don Smith. And that was the first guy, my first real uh, apprentice type guy. And, uh, you know, he was a top tech there. He Savage. He's a man's man, too. He's one of those guys who's naturally jacked, hustler. Um, and he taught me a lot. And I ended up living with the guy, partying with the guy. We were in Havasu. Like, I really liked that, you know, that kind of lifestyle that the body guys were living. And they had, like, better trucks and better toys than all the office so, people. So he taught you, though, too, right? Yeah. Because you didn't really have know anything about no, I collision? Mean, nothing about collision, you know. I was just, like, you know, a kid that just was cutting up his own, ruining his own perfectly good daily driver. But they obviously saw some hustle. I mean, it's pretty funny to think all the way back to AutoZone, some guy saw that. And Kyle has that where he, you, you're confident, you're very um, uh, approachable, and, and you'll help anybody. And so I think that probably it's funny how that goes. I think like AutoZone, some guy literally is telling you, you need to do this. And then you get there, and then you're accepted into the collision part because of, you know, you're a good dude. And so it's like, all right, teach me what, you know, and, and you learn. Yeah, yeah, you learn a lot. I mean, if anybody wants to learn how to customize cars, you better start in collision. You'll, you'll never get more experience cutting up cars and how cars go together and how they should be taken apart. And a lot of the stuff I learned in collision is kind of the same way I work on cars now, you know. I, we try to take stuff apart, like at factory seams and factory welds, instead of just, you know, hacking stuff off and sectioning it, like on sheet metal, as far as that goes. Cave and pave it all? <laughs> so some of that happens. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised. What's and, the biggest difference from you know new style collision to what you're doing now? What's when you look at these old metal trucks? So these old trucks are so much more simple. Like everything's single paneled. And another reason why I, I got so good, I think, at sectioning the bed sides is because all these new cars are so paper thin. So I was be sectioning on quarter panels, and I could almost section a quarter panel on a new car with like, almost no filler. So you'd be like sectioning in the sail panels, and that's like paper metal. So when I started welding on like bed sides, to me that felt like I was welding on a quarter inch plate because I had so much experience welding on super thin stuff. So it, without warping it. So when I started welding on this old thick metal, like I felt like I can't warp it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just a huge, so much easier. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, especially if you. It's like riding with training wheels or without training wheels, and somebody put them on. Like it. It's yeah. just easy to me to like weld on this bullshit. Off. Have you <laughs> have you warped anything when you you know these seventy bedsides? Have you ever had a little something get away from you? You know, on some of the older ones, they're definitely not as nice as the ones I do today. You know, obviously your work's gonna grow, and then some of the trucks, you know, there's been several where you get into them and they're full of filler, and then you're just straightening with metal that's already stretched. And we've we've always been able to save them and make them presentable, but there's definitely some that definitely got warped in the beginning. I mean, still acceptable. But nothing like we do today. With the Ford guys, do you warp them on purpose? <laughs> Fat Fender! <laughs> <laughs> nah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, that, remember we went out and got that and he turned us in on camera? Yeah. Yeah, we went out and got a bedside at Fat Fender. Jason Knoll runs Fat Fender Garage and Kyle cut down a, I think it was a dent side. It was a bump side, 72. Oh, it was a bump side, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a clean clean truck yeah those fords are pretty cool too because there's no seam in them you know i could section them at factory panels like we talked about earlier and reflange them and put them all back together at their factory spot welds yeah those fords they they literally have like the front and then the back is our, the way that ford did it they have a back cap if you will so yeah. he can cut that and then cap it it's funny to listen to like paul hitch the old man and how he says, you know, those guys want everything flat, and then we had to make engineer it, put bumps in it to give it strength. And now when you look at the trucks the way you look at them, even the Chevy trucks, looking at, you know, a 6772 bedside right now, and then the difference to a 6064, 5 and 6, how that has the cap on it, and then these don't. You know, so it's it's funny how they did all that, and they stamped it and made it strong, and now you're undoing some of that. Yeah, exactly. Taking apart where they put it together. What's the out of the three 
C10 era trucks, what's the hardest and what's the easiest and so on and so forth? Uh, actually, 67 and 72 is way harder and way more time. I still charge about the same price um, for all of them just because the technique we have in the other trucks makes it a lot faster for me, but it's still a lot of work. But 67 and 72 is hardest. Square bodies easier. And then 60 to 66, I really like doing those trucks because we can take them apart at all the factory seams, and there's no scars on a 60 to 66 short bed conversion. Kind of like a bump side then. Floor. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, very little paint's missing on the very edge of the panel. And then we might slightly irritate the paint by that uh, back cap. But all in all, I mean, they're, they're fun to do just because they come out looking pristine, no scars, like they were made to be shortened. Yeah, well, and like you said, with a back cap from like a bump side Ford or uh, a 60 to 66 Chevy truck, you can hide it all. Yeah, exactly. And they're pretty straight, right? That, there's really not a lot of change in that in that. Yeah, Red side? not a lot. We gotta we gotta roll the lower edge on the rear a little bit, but but like this thing, it flares up pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm pointing to a sixty-seven, seventy-two. Well, I'm pointing at the sixty-eight. So I'm on the backside uh, panel behind the tire. You know, it flares up pretty good. It's sort of a square body though. Yeah, the square bodies though. It's I mean, when you cut section, the way the in inner panel is, is rolled, they almost line up perfectly. Like, so there's not really much work you have to do to make them line up. And one thing Kyle showed me, and I never really noticed, was a long bed square body is pretty much, we think, stamped pretty much basically the same as a short bed. Yeah. If you look at the inside, you'll see where the short bed stamping is, and you'll also see where both the front and the rear, you'll see where it, it, it can be made a short bed. Yeah, the original center on the inner panel is the same on a short bed and a long bed. We just cut the ends off, and then it goes right back to factory spot weld. So there's no, there's no bed scar on the inside on the square body. Like they were made to be shortened. Like, and with how little metal distortion we do when we weld them, I mean, you really can't tell a short bed conversion on a square body or a 60 to 66. I mean, 67 to 72 also. It, a little bit of body work you would never know it was there. Same amount of body work you're gonna put on the rest of the panel anyways from wear and tear. So one of the things that we're gonna do a little different on Orange Slice that Kyle prefers not to do is he likes to have that stake pocket on the front and not roll it, correct? Well, we, we can, we're still going to keep the stake pocket on the front. There's just going to be a little scar around just oh, the stake okay. pocket, but that front edge will not have a bed scar. We're going to roll that front edge just to minimize the, you know, we want to keep all of this impact design on these bed sides. So. Because we have that impact decal, or for our Canadian friends, decal, uh, we, we're trying not to cut that or that's not going to get cut because we want to salvage that. But the back will have a, a little seam, a little scar, and that's okay. That's why it's going to be called Orange Slice. We'll have, yeah, one scar on the back. It'll be less than three-quarters of an inch wide of paint warpage. Cool. What about uh, OBS? Have you done one of those? Not yet, but we're not scared. We'll do one. Yeah. The right Are truck you... needs to come by. What do you think about OBS trucks? I mean, um, from cutting them down or... I don't think we're to that point, obviously. No. Uh, have you looked at an OBS long bed and, like, I, scoped it out? I haven't, but I know there's, there's always a way to cut it, you know. You just got to figure it out. But we're definitely not to that point where it makes sense cutting those trucks down. It'd have to be the right truck, like a grandpa truck, fully optioned out long bed that was, like, pristine to be worth your time. Just because you can still find a bed for 400 bucks. Yeah. So there'd be no point. Or find a short bed truck for relatively cheap. Isn't it funny, though, to think that, like, especially a square, like those long bed trucks that you would have never thought now uh, a good square or you know well any any good long bed even if we're talking all eras even the fords you know and i always think that's why the fords are gonna you know do well for a guy like you with a guy that's gonna cut them down because they're, they it seemed like they made a lot more long bits and there's just a lot of long bits out there there is and you know obviously i'm gonna get hate for cutting up these trucks and people think i'm ruining perfectly good trucks but i really think i'm saving more trucks because a lot of these trucks, the guys that are going to invest money in trucks, before a short bed was the only option. Now I give them the option to buy a long bed. Like people would not be putting this much money into a long bed truck. But now that they can get it cut down, you know, you're saving a truck from the field and getting it polished and put in a garage. So I think you're saving lives there. And well, not only that, but you're, you're, you're cutting it down and making, you know, you know, you're, the industry is benefiting as well. Yeah, the truck has some value now, whereas before that long bed truck would have just stayed neglected. So you're saving a lot more long beds, in my opinion. And short bed trucks have, were cool in the 70s. They were cool in the 80s. They were cool in the 90s. 
So, so to find a short bed that hasn't been repainted and re-hot rodded three times already, where you can find a long bed that's never been hot rodded, totally stock, for way less money, and you're getting a truck that's unmolested and then will molest it. Yeah, and you're going to put the money into performance or the yeah. molestation but, that Kyle's going to do from a full chassis to – it's really how the whole market is set up for this with the full chassis that people are going to buy. Or if they want to buy a front half or a back half, you know, if you, if you call, you know, chop and block and you want, I want a front half, I want a back half, I'm going to keep my stock frame because they're still out there. I, I have a, a stock 69 shorty frame. And I just got a call on the other day, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to sell it or not. But there's still there's still value in in a stock frame, and you know that you can find these trucks. And what about a four wheel drive? Have you been asked to cut one of those down yet? I don't think we've never cut out a four wheel drive. There's just, I mean, the long bed square bodies look good as four wheel drives. I think. And I, I think, think a lot of people. Seven seventy two do too. I, I, I like the four wheel drive truck. I agree. Sixty seven two seventy twos do look good long. Um, I actually thought about with Orange Slice, I thought if, like, I thought about going up with it. Yeah, if you did a four-wheel drive conversion, then a long bed's acceptable. Yeah. But, you know, if it's a, if it's a two-wheel drive long bed, like, it's no. not going to be cool. I don't no. know what you do to it. It's not no, they're cool. not. They, to each his own, and we'll get some uh, Yeah, mail. some people we'll get say they're cool. And like, on it, but I could put my yeah. Harley in the back, and I could still work my truck. I, I, I like long bed. It's funny, the 6772s, I really like a long bed, three-quarter ton. I, li- I like that big boy truck. And and then if it's a two-wheel drive, I just, I even like the C20s, I just like a, sh- a short bed. I like a short bed, you know, two-wheel drive truck, and then I, I like the long bed, you know. It's just funny how that works. And squares look great. I don't know if it's just because we grew up looking at Bigfoot and every other big old square body four-wheel drive truck, but that kid in Canada, Radke, He's got that baby blue. It's like a, it might be like a 76. He's got a 73 Ford grill on it. That truck is just, just screams rad. Yeah. I mean, I like all trucks. You know, I've, I've driven plenty of long beds that I haven't cut down. You know, not every truck needs to be cut down, but you know, if you're going to be a show truck or you're going to be cruising at a hot rod, you don't want a long bed truck. I mean, that's what your landscaper drives. Don't take that to a show. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's funny. You roll up to a truck show and you got a long bed truck. That'd be like, uh, spectator parking's this way. Like, dude, they got wheels on this thing. I'm taking the show. Yeah, they just don't have that. I, I do see some, you know, uh, Waylon Kane had that one in TMI's booth this year. He did a few little things to it, but, um, sorry, long bed guys. Tool drive, tool drive long beds just, they don't hold the candle to. And I mean, I'm, I'm driving Yellowstone around. So that thing is as long as they get. Well, speaking of that, so, uh, the SBS truck, the square body, they've got that diesel truck. You did a kind of a, king cab crew cab extension how was that to you know what was your thoughts on that and how how was that to do so that we uh so the audience square body syndicate has um a lot like yellowstone it's yellow and white um it's going to be there they're putting a diesel in it and kyle made it kind of a mega cab yeah we moved all the proportions around on it so joe yezzy was also um he kind of guided me, you know, told me to take the leap when I started this also. He actually named Metal Ox Metal Ox. Um, when everybody was kicking around names, he's like, yo, what's your last name? He said, Ox. I said, Oxberger. He said, all right, it should be Metal Ox. And he nodded his head. He's like, all right, Metal Ox. Yeah, it's strong. And I couldn't think of anything. He's like, that sounds like a strong name. And like, obviously, that guy knows what he's talking about marketing. I mean, he's got the biggest square body fan base out there. So anyways, he came up with the name. And uh, right when the shop opened, he picked up this crew just like Yellowstone, and we moved all the proportions around. So we stretched the cab, I think like five inches, uh, short in the bed, eight inches in the middle, and like an inch and a half in the back. Like all the mods we did were so subtle, and how much work we had to do to move everything just a matter of inches, moving stuff around. And then I think we shortened the wheelbase like, I want to say like five or eight inches. I'd have to look back at my old post, but it should be a pretty cool truck. I think they're getting pretty close to finishing it. As soon as it left here, they blew it all apart, and they did, you know, full powder-coated chassis, putting the diesel in it, and then it's uh, it's getting painted right now, I believe. So it should hit the seam hopefully sometime this year. Now, is that so? In so the seat gets moved back, so you have more leg room for the back. So I left all the factory uh, seat will bolt in in the factory location, but their plan was to make a seat that reclines, so the whole back section will become like a bed. So I don't know what, where they're at with that, but I think that's the game plan with that thing. We just gave him the room. We did the metal work, and that, that's kind of where it ended. You know? Yeah, I could see, like, with Yellowstone, if you could move the seat back. Well, maybe, like, a scotch of rake, you know, because 
I do feel like that seat, no, that seat, it's not bad. You know, the cool thing about, well, a 6772 and a square body, they have the underneath the window, it has metal that's at a, you know, whatever that is, a 18 degrees or 25 degree. And that's kind of what you have with the, with the seat. I know with Yellowstone, if you have two taller guys up front and we're all the way back, if you're, if you're sitting in the back seat, which you've uh, sat in it plenty of twice, miles two times <laughs> um, across the country, you, you know, you, uh, it's, it's a little tight. So usually if I know I've got some guys that are, you know, five, 10 or more in the back, I'll scoot the skeet, uh, I'll scoot the skeet, I'll scoot the seat, a scotch forward about two notches in, in the whole thing because but but then when I go all the way back, I'm like, whoa, you know. So almost like you cutting metal from, you know, a, a Volkswagen that's paper thin. When I scoot that seat all the way back, I'm almost like this is this is a lot of room. You know, yeah. this is this yeah. is gay. this is Johnny G style. <laughs> he likes it to be like all the Lean way back man. with the steering wheel <laughs> all the way cocked down, like a straight up gangster. But you know, there, there's a lot of room. But I could see having a crew cab. Where you could get a, you know, like you said, five inches more, you push that back, you're, nobody's yeah, it, moving it, any seat. There's it's all plenty the difference. Of room. Yeah. It's all the difference in the world, that couple of inches for sure. Now, is that kind of one of the most extravagant metal trucks that you've done that, you know, when you think about a fabrication? Um, that's definitely up there. You know, the shop has been so nonstop. Like I kind of haven't even thought about that truck since you just now brought it up. It's crazy, but I think this this white truck behind me, I think is a lot more extensive as far as like how far we're taking this thing apart. Like when we do a firewall here, we don't just put filler panels on it. Like we cut it off and it's all fresh, fresh metal. And we do even thicker than factory metal. So there's no warpage and be very little body work on this firewall when it's all done. I'll take some pics of what he'll let me and we'll post it when I drop the show. I'm not saying we have to post that or whatever. Yeah. We'll go over it, but I will say I've seen the firewall. I've seen the whole engine bay. And it's it's unmatched. I mean, there's a lot of work that's been done, a lot of little details. But some of these things will never be noticed or seen, you know, the, the amount, the, the level. A lot of it, because some of it, you know, not it, it's underneath. Yeah. A lot of work. For sure. For sure. Some, some F-bombs, some cussing? I don't know. I like it. You know, when I get in a groove and I start start uh rolling on a project like that when i'm doing metal work like that it's really not stressful you know it's what i do is what i'd be doing if i won the lottery you know the only thing that's stressful a lot is when you bring like, the money and the work into it but as far as what i do when i'm working it's what i like to do yeah he, you're a patient man that's a that's a big thing i think for what you do and he's listened to i think every episode of c10 talk from the beginning so i like to bounce things off of him i know he listens to a lot of rogan and I think when I talk to you, you like to just put the headphones on and, and just go to town. Yeah. Anybody that has a job where they're not, where they can put headphones in and do their own thing. I mean, you're foolish not to. I mean, I listen to all kinds of stuff, you know, audiobooks. I mean, philosophy. Like I try to pack my mind with as much stuff as I can when I'm just doing my rhythm because I, when you get, then you get in a flow state. And when you work when you're in a flow state, you get so much more done and it doesn't even feel like you're working. So. And with metal work, I'm so comfortable doing it that I can get in that state pretty quickly and just put the headphones in. I'm not even really thinking. I'm just letting the work come to me. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. And I like, you know, putting new ideas in your head and thinking of things that you wouldn't have thought of before. Well, you know it's almost I mean? like you're day daydreaming and getting paid to do it. Like your mind is somewhere, but your muscle memory is doing what it knows how to do. Yeah. You're a machine. Yeah. And, you know, when you get to that state, sometimes you got to seek that state, you know, when you're you can get frustrated and a lot of times like i have to work with headphones in like if i if i have all the inputs going on i can get distracted real quick you know my mind can go in a thousand different places we good yeah yeah is that bowman yeah bowman's calling right now bowman? so i just said suck it bowman <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've got a couple texts that just came in um okay so you're a machine you're working you're working there how about big window conversions that's another one i got for you you did a big window conversion on this one behind us. Yeah. Do we yeah. have names for these so I can just say the names or we're just going to say 68 and then is this four, five or six? This is a six. Okay. So we've got the, we've got the eight and the six or the six and the eight. So however you want to count it out. But the 66 is seafoam custom. It's got the white, you know, it's, it's, it's the real deal. The 68 is a uh, all white. 
Arizona truck, and uh, it's there's the, both these trucks are minimal, minimal rust, and that's a cool thing about long beds, is their long beds were out there. Grandpa still had them. Uh, they're they're on maybe their second owner, if not some of the first owner still, and you can find them, and and they've really kind of like you said, they've revitalized some of the stuff where guys would have not been able to get into these trucks. Now this is a unique situation because these guys, I'm just going to throw this out there. I know for a fact both of these are over 50. They potentially could be over 80. And these cars, these trucks have $50,000 worth of parts in each one. Yeah. So there's no doubt that to say that, oh, well, yeah, you know, that guy would have got into whatever he wanted to get into anyways. But it's cool to think that it's not all on rust repair. You know, out here, we're lucky. Yeah. You know, I'm really good at rust repair. I've done I like taking panels apart. You know, I've done a lot of it, but it's definitely not my favorite thing to do. I'd way rather be doing something that somebody's going to see and go, wow, that's cool, than, wow, that's not rusty anymore. You know, it's, and if you buy a rusty truck, I mean, you've said this in the past, always buy the best truck you can afford. And the truck that, even if you buy a truck that's almost done and you just have to tweak it to make it yours, but don't buy, if you buy a truck for 1500 bucks, but it needs rockers, kick panels, floor extensions, you're going to have way more money in it if it's at my shop for a week getting fixed than you would just, spending a couple thousand more and getting a better truck, you know. Well, and then, then you start to... And then your money goes right into making your truck what you want it to be, yeah. not to make it a, not a rusty piece of shit. Well, and you don't want to hate your truck. Yeah. That's that's what I think people get to where they, they buy it for the value, and then it's almost like when you watch these, like, house shows where they remodel it, and they're like, okay, well, you're out of money, and it's like, oh, my God, we got a bad phone call. The plumbing and the, and the you know... Uh, the, the floor was, you know, is, uh, I don't know, what, the foundation is cracked. It's yeah. like, it's like you almost have to have that built in. And if, especially depending on what you buy, but these old trucks, they, they all have skeletons in their closet. You know, very rarely do they not. Yeah, I think this green one is probably the only truck I've seen that has no skeletons. I mean, there's, it's a 66 with no fender rust, which I've never seen. No rust, like not even surface rust, nothing. What's the story on it? It just came from... It's from Pahrump, Nevada. It's been there its whole life. Yeah. So it's always just been bone dry. It's... it's uh, Yeah, I mean, even in Arizona, I have a... I'm a second owner on my 72 Cheyenne that you guys probably really have never seen because I never... It's not driving anymore, but it, it even has rockers in it. I don't even know it's ever left the state of Arizona. Yeah, most of these uh, Arizona trucks, even you have to put rockers on them. I mean, these trucks... When you start cutting these trucks apart, the inside of every panel is still shiny bare metal if it's not a rusty truck. They didn't do any corrosion protection on them. We're taking apart Payson's 66, and uh, that front, that front uh, where the cab, the cab is good, but where the fender goes in, we're trying to back that bolt out. Oh, and it's just, it's like powder coming. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we're backing it out, the powder is just dropping from that lower, you know, rear, rear front fender. Where they're just on these sixty to sixty sixes are just just yoked. Oh yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's crazy to and think that this is that clean. C10 Nation. For over sixteen years, truck builders continue to choose Accuware suspension for their air management solution. Today, that choice gets even easier. Endo CVT by Accuware. C V T. Compressor, valve, tank takes all of the components that previously needed to be pieced together and integrates them into an all-in-one, easy-to-install unit. That means an internal compressor with a built-in air dryer, smart sensors to keep everything running smooth, valves in the tank caps, and a plug-and-play harness. The best part? Silent. Library silent. No more buzzing compressors. Finally. Are you ready to choose the latest and greatest in air management? See it and try to hear it for yourself by heading to endo.acuware.com. That's endo, E-N-D-O, dot acuare, dot com. Hey guys, I use precision replacement parts on my builds because I demand quality and I demand precision. If you want the best weather stripping, demand precision. PRP.com, it's that easy, PRP.com. Seriously, check this out. OEM Design Parts. It's easy to install, and you have a lifetime warranty. Everything from windshield seals, rear window seals, door seals, roof rail seals, vent window seals, belt line molding, glass run channels, trunk seals, hood decal, you need it, they've got it. They also have their vent window refurbishing program. You send in your wing windows, and they send them back, and they're completely rebuilt, disassembled, sandblasted, painted, 
and they replace and install new weather stripping, new glass, and handles. Talk about quality, talk about precision, and that's why I use Precision Replacement Parts. PRP.com. And follow them on social media as well. When we do like big window swaps and stuff, you know, we take that whole inner panel out, and that's all just bare metal behind that. There's, there's no black e coat or nothing on it. The whole insides of the roof skins on these trucks, insides of the doors, insides of everything is just bare metal from the factory. Is this your first big window or is this your second one? This is my first. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, we forgot to answer that question about big window swaps. Well, yeah, that's where we kind of come back. That's, I do that. Squirrel. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so we only do them if we have a donor plug. I know some guys make like a aftermarket panel that goes in there, but with as much metal work you're going to have to do to make that panel fit and then the body work afterwards when you weld one of those in and still not look like a factory install, it's cheaper to just find a donor cab that the bottom half is rotted out of and cut that back window inner panel out. And then we can do that conversion in about a day or two, a thousand bucks. So find it, a thousand bucks. Yeah, we do it a thousand plus the inner panel. So whatever you pay for that. Yeah. Which they're out there. I mean, I don't know that, 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 I know where there's one in Texas that I'd love to get my hands on, but. But with these trucks, like we were talking about having no corrosion protection, the bottom half of most of these trucks is completely rotted out anyways. So if it's a big window, I mean, that's the only thing that you can still get out of the truck that's worth it. Maybe the guys back east or up in Minnesota, up in the UP, they need to, they need to do a swap program where they, because yeah, <laughs> they still have the, you know, the, the rear window, because who knows the A post, you could have some rust down in there. Yeah. Obviously the cabs. But that rear window should be fine. Yeah, for the most part. In yeah. an exchange program. Exactly. Yeah, cabs We take their top half, they have our bottom half. <laughs> That's like interior in Arizona. If interior Arizona guys could just match up with because <laughs> yeah. their cabs are just gone, but the interior is great. Mint. And then our interior is just trash from the sun, especially square bodies, because they just, you know, crack and all the, everything. The, the more plastic on a truck, the harder Arizona is on it, but the metal is fine. Yeah. Um, we've really hit pretty much everything that I have. Uh, I've got some big news that, you know, in this Instagram world, social media world that we live in, we don't get kind of the in-depth backstory, but Kyle's got number two girl on the way. So yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. I come from a house full of boys and then I created a house full of girls. <laughs> uh, girl number two on the way. Yeah. So uh, what's that? I mean, you, you plug away here 60 plus hours a week. Uh, what, what are you thinking here? I mean, big change coming up? You know, I'm, I mean, fortunately, my wife is in a position where she's going to get like five months of maternity leave. So, you know, the baby will have full mama attention. But, you know, I'll probably take a day or two off when the baby gets here, but I'll still be right back to business as usual, you know. Well, Kyle's a worker, and he's got a SEMA build that's sitting three feet from him right now. So uh, that's, I mean, that's a big deal. And you you said it. I don't know if it'll stay that way, but you're you're looking really good on your schedule. Yeah, you know, I feel good. You know, a lot of guys are still just taking their trucks apart, and ours is going to powder coat at the end of this week. So we'll have plenty of time to do a quality reassembly on this truck. It's not going to be SEMA done. It's going to be done done, hopefully. And you, you are, know. and you will have your spot and everything. Yeah, we're going to be in the United Pacific booth uh, in the Central Hall. Um, that's thanks to Johnny G. Um, Johnny G. Johnny G. Yeah, couldn't be there without him. Um, wouldn't be in scene without Johnny G. Wouldn't be here without Cameron. That's for sure. But um, yeah, it's cool to see the uh, friends in low places. You know, where people it takes a, a family, a village to raise you know kids, and the people and the networks and the relationships that you make along the way, and how they benefit you, and it's kind of that whole don't burn bridges. You know, you have these friends. You randomly meet a guy because you have a 72 that's been cut down and he tracks you down. Now you work with him. You meet Johnny G. Johnny G comes out. It's because of trucks. Yep. You meet Johnny G. He comes out from Cali and now you guys, he's over here helping you wrench. It's, it's just crazy. Yeah. So Johnny G, one day he called me up. He's like, Hey, I just put a door on my, his, his, uh, 04 Silverado. He's like, he needs adjusted and he heard, heard I did collision work. So I was like, I'll bring it by the shop. So I adjusted it for him, and he's like, hey, I think I'm going to come by and start, like, working with you. I was like, absolutely, come on down. Johnny G, he's been a part of so many builds that people don't even know about. Like, his background in building trucks is extensive, and he's, like, a wiring genius, and he's a very good mechanic. So having him around is, like, especially with the SEMA build and him making that happen with his connections he has with these bigger companies. But, you know, 
I'm getting there. You know, I, I know a lot of guys from a lot of companies, but Johnny's like, he's there. He knows everybody on a first name basis, you know. So. Yeah. It's, uh, I think that's part of the thing that people, you know, you're a grinder. You're out here, you're grinding. It's like, okay, now I need to go make calls to get parts and whether or not it's sponsorship or beating down the doors or other companies. That's a whole nother after hours thing that takes a lot of time that just doesn't happen on its own. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I'm, I'm my best out in the shop, you know. I can, uh, it was getting to the point, especially after they did the C10 Builder's Guide. Um, we never really clarified, but they put my personal phone number in that ad f- for when we did a how-to short bike conversion on the last Builder's Guide. And between Instagram and then my phone, as soon as that ad hit the shelves, I was getting blown up like you would not believe. Like, it was a full-time job just trying to, like, keep track of people and then have people call me and then numbers like crazy numbers come to my phone all day. Should we forward so, those to Whips? Cause <laughs> Whip, I think Whips is the one that wrote that. Yeah. You know, and he, he probably just assumed, you know, he didn't even ask me about it. I'm sure I don't care. You know, it's whatever. I would have never thought this would happen either. I probably would have said put my number in there. But anyways, so I just got to the point where like for a few months there, I just had to like lock my cell phone away and just do what I do and plug away and get the, get the shit done. Like, at the end of the day, the truck got to get done. Do you get, how many people do you get? That just ask that 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 want to know how do I do it? Oh man, it's crazy all the time. You know, probably fifty percent of people are inquiring like, "Hey, how do you do it?" And you know, I wish I could tell everybody how to do it. And at the beginning, I'm sure I did, but it just gets to the point where like, how much stuff doesn't pan out? Like the people that want me to work on their stuff, I'm gonna work on their stuff. You know, they'll figure out how to contact me and they'll do it in a way. But some people will be like, shoot me a, a DM that maybe won't get checked, maybe it will. I try my best, but you never know. And if I don't respond, they're like, oh, fuck that guy. He doesn't work on my, you know, he doesn't answer DMs or he didn't answer me. So I don't want to, yeah. you know, so that's going to happen. Man, but but people a... that want me to work on their shit, it'll end up here. So yeah. I don't worry about that, you know. Yeah, I, you I started, stress I was at the beginning too, I was worried about getting work in here. But now it's like, pff, the work will always be here. I just got to get it done. It, somebody just, oh my God, it was such a good post. But somebody just, I must follow them or however I came across it would like in the last week. But they went, he, the guy went off. He's like. I'm not going to respond to any more how-tos. I try my best, and I actually spend 20 hours a week responding just to be helpful, but I have to be in the shop grinding 60-plus yeah. hours a week, so I just don't have the time to give to, you know, freedom, just free tech. Yeah. And uh, do you ever get to the point where, and I don't you know, I don't want to be, it's, it is negative, I don't want to be negative, but where people will just ask me stuff, stuff, and I'm like, I just want to say, like, usually I just say, go to the forum. That's what I try to say. But you're like, are you kidding me? Like, have you even Googled any of this? And, and I think you're the type of guy. I know you are. You're the type of guy. And most C10 guys are this way. They'll bend over backwards to help somebody, especially if that somebody has done a ton of due diligence or work on their own and they, and they're, they're like, listen, here's my situation. You know, I've got this to this. I've looked up this and this doesn't match with this and this and this. Have you ever come across this? Uh, I'll pay you for your time, whatever. Da, da, da. But sometimes people just come across and you're like, they're, they're almost, they're, they are, they're disrespectful of your time. They want it for free. Yeah. And you know, in the beginning, I, I really tried to answer every single person and I, and I did for a long time, but it just gets to a point where like, what am I doing here? You know, this is the time I could be at home. And I'm on my stupid phone, you know what I mean? When I don't need to be. Um, so it, it, there definitely is that. And, you know, I try to be a nice guy to everybody. And, uh, you know, that's how I've made the connections I had, have in the C10 industry that we got going on here. But, you know, the guys that know me close and the guys that I know close, like, I'm a busy guy. But, like, if you ever call me, like, I'll come to your house in the middle of Tuesday for whatever reason. You know what I mean? And I know there's guys, tons of guys that would do that for me. Which is, uh, you know, it's awesome. You know, it's humbling. But uh, that's, that's, that's what it's all about, you yeah. know, just just being nice. You know, just try, and everybody just be nice to you, and it just kind of works I, I out. Think, you know, it's know, impossible without the community. Well, and I don't know if Joe said this, but back to Yezzy, I think it, somebody, he probably heard it from somebody. It's probably, you know, it's like, is it better to have four quarters? Is it better to have ten dimes, or is it better to have a hundred pennies? And, you know, that, that ten dimes and that four quarters, meaning – you have really four, four, you know, really good friends that you know you can count on at all times, or or that ten friends that you know you can count on. When you get to that hundred pennies, it's, the value is just not there. We we want to be friendly to everybody. You want to you know give give give, but you have 
uh, you know, recitals to go to. You have, you know, birthdays to go to. And you know what? You just have sitting on the couch with my daughter and my wife time too. Yeah. And at that point, like you said, a hundred pennies, you're not doing it them any good trying to spread yourself out to a hundred people, you know, so you, it's not good for anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's tough. It's tough to keep that. But it's also, like you said, humbling to look at where the last, you know, year and a half to two years where Kyle Oxberger, Metal Ox, C10 Acres, to think that you are where you are now. You, you, you could have, I don't know that you could have dreamed you'd be where you are now. No way. Like, it was kind of a pipe dream, honestly, to be on this podcast, strangely enough. You know? Well, I'm not talking was, about the podcast. No, 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 I know, I know. I'm just saying that, look, we're here, we're here, we're here now. But I would have never thought I'd be where I'm at. And, you know, I have the context that I have now. I know the people I know now. And, uh, you know, everybody asks, like, it's funny. Like, people, I'm sure they ask you, too, like, how do you get in the C10? How do, how do you know all these guys? How do you get in everybody? It's like, if you per- give something to the community, you don't have to, like, try to be friends with these guys. Like, people will come to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, they will They will embrace you. Yeah, they will yeah. embrace you, which I have been embraced. And, uh, you know, as far as, like, meeting people, like, it's not like I, I mean, I DM'd you. That's how me and you met. But, like, most other people, like, you know, you, you put something out there and then people will find you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, you you got to offer something and then, you know what I mean? Well, I think it's a law of attraction. People, yeah, it's exactly. People That's will, what I'm trying to will say. People will find yeah. one another. Whether, yeah. I mean, we're not gay. I mean, kind of. But, <laughs> a little but, bit. <laughs> but, but you just find one another and you start talking and you, and you just like the guy that met Kyle at AutoZone. I mean, you know, we, we, you're, you're like, dude, this is a good guy. I like good guys. He's helping me. I want to help him. And it, it goes back to just, kind of a karma good people doing good things for you yeah. know we can't make everybody happy you just got to put good out there yeah and then good will come back always so where do you where would you so two years ago you know i mean i remember having some killer talks with you about you know i'm, I'm should i leave should i not leave and uh i definitely feel like i was pushing you you know do it do it do it and now you're here where do you where would you hope to be in two years? Where do you see yourself in two years from now? So right now we have these, you know, I was in the beginning, it's like, what do I do? Do I grow this business as big as I can, get a bunch of employees? You know, when you do that, that's good for some guys. But for me, I just put too much stress on my plate and that's not where I belong. You know, I don't want to build a monster that I have to control, which I could. You know, I have enough work where I could get more employees and then more space and then more overhead. But you know, that's not for me. I don't want to manage the monster. I'd rather be doing what I like to do. So I'll probably never have two big builds in here at a time like I do now. Um, these kind of were like customers that were already great customers that I had for smaller jobs and they've escalated. We've got Oro's Blazer, the prom queen, coming in here real short, shortly to get laid out all the way too, which how crazy is that? You know, John Oro's truck is in my shop and I've been open for a year, you know, and I was nobody two years ago. Nobody. So... It's super humbling to be in that position to where I'm working on probably one of the most famous trucks in the scene and you wouldn't want it in anybody else's shop. So that makes me happy. But anyways, um, we're kind of getting more into, we'll probably do one big build a year from here on out. And it'll be something either, if it's a customer commission job, it'll have to be something where we have almost free reign and where we have, can get all the parts coming immediately because it has to streamline. Like with these big builds, like a part delay or a, you know, so something from our supplier delay, it can really set you back. And then you have a whole entire bay tied up. Because a big build, the biggest thing, the problem with it, why it doesn't make you money, is because it takes up so much damn space for so long. Like when you blow a truck apart, the fucker gets big. It make any shop look real small in a minute. Yeah. That's something so, that you don't, I don't think a lot of people think about. Yeah, you know, space. Well, I mean, some people, a two-car garage, you know it takes up your two-car garage. Yeah. Well, if you had to pay, you know real estate or you had to pay value for that yeah if you're, yeah you're paying for square footage that's not being used when you're waiting on something with a big build so that's where it hurts you so we'll probably in the future just do one build a year either be a build that we build on our terms 100 percent, or a build where it's you know up front this is how it's going to be done you know i guess having the expectation in the beginning what's going to happen with the truck because these two kind of grew into something that was the original plan and um i'm not i don't regret any of that you know i'm very passionate about both these trucks and you know, eight, eight months from now, these trucks will be badass and build, and it'll put us on the map, and it'll be that much more for the company. So, I'm good with that. But um, so, do, do you do you say I'm gonna have one custom build in in this bay, and then I'm 
Slamming and bamming. Uh, yeah, bedsides on the other bay. Slamming and bamming. No job that takes longer than a week in the other bay. So we're gonna get into that, and then we're products. So um, you know, there's a million people making like filler panels and stuff like that. We're not gonna make anything like that, but we just just developed. I actually got one for you. I gotta get to you at the podcast. Uh, bolt in, uh, slow open tailgate for 67 to 72, like we did on Micah's truck. But this one will bolt into a factory truck. You gotta drill two holes, but everything else is 100% bolt in. You could put it on a painted truck. And it'll make your tailgate, you know, you open it and it opens up real slow like a, like it would on a new pickup. So that's gonna hit our, uh, pre-order within the next couple of weeks. We just gotta make the install video. Okay. Which I might have to hit you up for that. Okay. Um, you so know, that's gonna be available the how to. On, the, on the website? Yeah, that'll be on the website. We're gonna do a pre-order on that. So, cause we don't know how much parts, we don't know how much we're gonna sell these and our, so we have a lot of suppliers, you know, for the struts and stuff. So they could be out. So we'll do like a pre-order. Now you have this on your truck. Um, we actually have it on, there's only one truck that has a complete kit on it. It's Cameron's truck outside. Okay. But we have, we have a couple of, uh, prototypes. We're going to give one to you and a couple other guys so they can do the install. Okay. Make sure that it works. And then, uh. And what's that going to run? We're still working on a price. The pre-order is probably going to launch at between 189 and 199. Um, but it's got like a bunch of custom machine billet pieces. You know, it's not, and there's a lot of costs involved with the struts and the cables. And you also eliminate the, the metal straps and you go to a cable like a new truck. So anyways. Clean. clean. It cleans it up and yeah. then just a cool little feature to have on your truck. What's well, just cool to, the, you know, so many little things that are happening, you know, within the industry and making from the truck doors, you know, closing to the tailgates to all the little filler panels, the handles, it's it's amazing how how this industry in the last five years, the aftermarket, the ability to see that change and be part of that is it's remarkable. For sure. So we're gonna do a pre-order on that. We'll open that up for like three or four weeks, and then we'll order our supplies based off of that, and it'll probably be another four weeks before you get the part in your hand. But that's gonna happen here real soon. Okay. And then also, Cameron and I have been talking. We're gonna start developing four-wheel drive conversion kits. So you'll be able to take a half-ton long bed and make it a. Like we talked about, the 4 by 4s are cool if they're long. So it'll give some more value to a long bed truck. You know, just, so what will that entail? You're saying you're so you, gonna do, you'd have to uh, you'd have to find front axle. Yep. And but, then the transfer case? Uh, yeah, so you'd have to do a front axle transfer case. But um, it, it would just get you everything you need to put the, the front axle in that truck bolt in, basically. So even they could probably even have an option of just going four-wheel drive without a transfer case, kind of pre-runner-esque. Yeah, you'd have a straight front axle, though, so that you'd have the Bluetooth drive shaft. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have the Bluetooth <laughs> track shot. You, you could do that and then piecemeal it and get a MP205 or whatever, you know, yeah. they're, they're looking to do and then cut a hole. And, you know, I'm sure you'll have videos that show people how to do that and then, you know, kind of add to that. So do you see you and Cameron staying together? Like, obviously, real estate, you're saying, Hey, I could get bumped out of here. He's not going to bump you, but, but would you, do you see not only you staying together, but going to a new place because of growth? At some point, you know, it's going to have to happen. I don't know how that's going to happen right now, but we're at some point we're going to need more square footage, and I really need a yard. Um, right now our place, you know, it's in a, I don't know if you call it like an upscale industrial place, so we don't have like a gated yard, so we have to pull everything in and out at night. So every morning we get here, we have to pull all the trucks out, all the bedsides out, and then every night before we leave we got to pull it all back in, so it's a pain in the ass. But um, Cameron will always have some part to do with his business, whether it be like product development or helping me with sales or, and he's always going to help me on trucks because his attention to detail, like, you know, he's the most humble guy in the world and he only builds stuff the way he likes it. He doesn't have to brag or post on Instagram or nothing. But if you look at his truck, the Grinch, you know, there's a lot of seafoam green bag trucks out there. But if you put his truck up on a lift and look at how quality this guy does his work and how meticulous he is with how it's plumbed and wired, I mean, you can't find a wire underneath that truck. Everything you could eat off of. It's a patina truck, but it's got air conditioning, heated seats, power windows, and you would never know that looking at it. It just looks like another patina truck. So, and he's a guy, you know, me and him and Johnny, there's no egos with any of us. So if I'm doing something, I say, hey, should I be doing this this way? He's not going to be like, oh, he's not going to sugarcoat it. He'd be like, no, dude, don't do that. And he trusts me that way, and I trust him that way, you know. It's crazy. You, you literally just met because he saw your truck. Yeah, he saw me driving into work, and he followed me. And then, you know, he's always going to be really close to me. Yeah. So And, and Cam's a really, like you said, really down-to-earth guy who thinks on a high level. He, he does think on a high level. He, 
Never, never, I would, me and Cameron will never get in an argument or fight because I have so much respect for him knowing that he would never fight about anything unless he knows he's right. So if, if Cam tells you something's wrong, he doesn't open his mouth unless he knows it to be true. He's very, you know, he's a very unique guy. That's good advice. I won't mess with Cam. <laughs> <laughs> Not like, he, he doesn't have an opinion on something unless it's the facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's a very cool guy like that. When it gets at the time, too, you're like, hey, man, if you, you know, if you think you got it right, but. Obviously, he's got a lot of builds to back it up, not just his C10. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's got a Cadillac that is oh, yeah. the most ridiculous flat back paint job I've ever seen. And, and, and his, the attention to detail on things just bananas. And that truck, every time it comes out, people think it's a new build because he only brings it out every other year. And we're lucky to have such rad dudes, you know, in yeah. the scene, and, and especially here just in Phoenix. We're lucky, you know, and, and uh, it's cool, again, back to that law of attraction where people have just kind of come together together you know, even Johnny, it's crazy. He was, he just randomly moved here, ends up down the road and on his way into work or whatever, you know, and, and the relationships form. And it's a, it's a powerful thing. It's, it's literally more than just trucks. Yeah. But I mean, exactly. It's way more than trucks. Yeah. People that don't know, don't, don't know. <laughs> no, no. And that's why I think keeps the C10, um, movement, C10 nation, C10 family. The trucks are cool, but the people are cooler. And as long as we keep egos in check and have fun and realize, Five years from now, ten years from now, um, when when we're at you know daughters and kids' birthday parties and weddings and uh, bar mitzvahs and graduations, it's like if you if you did the family tree based upon you know Papa Dino and, and the the way that we've all met in this this sect of C tens, it's it's pretty pretty crazy you know deal that we have. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird connection. Yeah, you know even like I know Kyle's dad just. Just Wayne, you know, and just a, <laughs> just a, talk about a man's man. I mean, uh, what was it? What's your guy, Danny? Dan, what's the guy that you work for at the, at the Don? Don. Uh, I don't know. I've never met Don, but I've met Wayne and I'm not messing with Wayne. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a cool thing. So two years from now, you're going to keep doing what you're doing. You're not, you know, you're just, you're, you're going to keep cutting down bedsides and, and, um, uh, is there anything that you, want to do that you haven't been challenged to do is there anything where you're like this is something that maybe people don't know about me but i really want to do this um c10 wise c10 or wise. truck wise fabricating wise uh yeah you know i've had a truck in my head that i've been wanting to build it would really take the right customer maybe it'll be something i built for myself but you know there's some stuff i want to do on a 67 that i really don't think has been done um i don't want to go too much into details but there's definitely Definitely builds that that will happen out of here at some point. Okay. Whether it be funded by me or funded by a customer. What about non-fabricating truck-wise? Anything career-wise, goal-wise, life-wise that you want to skydive one time? You want to... Nah. What, what, fuck what, that. I'm what, no, some, <laughs> some, like that. Something else you want to do. Something that you, you know, a challenge or a, a bucket list thing for Kyle, the, the Metal Ox magician. Besides Beyond C10 talk. Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, have a boy? I'm going to have to adopt you one of those. <laughs> I think I got bad semen. He was hoping, <laughs> he was hoping this was going to be a boy, and he found out it was going to be a girl, and he's like, all right. Yeah, you know, I think some guys just meant to be dads of daughters. Hey, my you buddy, know, honestly, fire I, guy, two girls, he just found out he's having a boy, so you never know. You know, at this point, I don't even, Maybe I'm not. Maybe I wouldn't be a good dad to a son. So maybe it's a good thing I have daughters. Oh God, come on! Bro. You're just telling yourself that you'd be a I good dad know. no matter what. Maybe come I don't on. know. Now you're getting carried away. But uh, either way, I mean, I'm I'm blessed as far as that goes. You know, uh, certain things. You know, I'm still figuring out this business stuff and this metal lock stuff. But like, I'm super fortunate. Like, the stuff that really matters, I already have like figured out. You know, I'm I'm where I want to be. Like where I live. You know. My chick, she's rad. She's rad. You know, it's uh, I don't ever have to worry about that. You know, I got the right wife. Um, I got a beautiful daughter. I got, a, you know, I'm close to my parents. I had great parents. Um, so all the stuff that really matters. I mean, everything else is just you know like extra credit. You know? Life's good. Life's good. You know, I can't complain. Okay. Um, anything I get stressed about is just all on my own. You know, it's my fault. Kyle doesn't get stressed. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so one guy that I, I wanted, I just thought of when we were talking about the girls and the boys and stuff is. Somebody that I think you're pretty close to that you've met through this, this industry is uh, Mr. Big Fish. 
That's my dog. Yeah. What, yeah. I mean, another great guy. A great that, guy. He's such a rad dude, and you met through trucks. And, and uh, isn't it funny that, you know, you look and you're like, you're building a truck for John Oro. You're going to be. You're going to be working on the prom queen. You're hanging out with the big fish. I mean, uh, life, you're sitting on C10 Talk, so so life's good. Life's good. Uh, Carlos dropped over, introduced me to big fish at LST. You know, I already had a few. Yeah. So we were all liquored up, and... I mean, immediate, like he's, Big Fish is family to me, you know, uh, immediate connection. I like all you guys, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, people won't, sounds gay or whatever, but like, it's like a different kind of like, yeah, bonding that we all have. I, I don't think it sounds gay. And if anybody listens, it's, it's really like family. If it's, anybody thinks it sounds gay, then you, you're missing out because it's, it's a, it's a good thing. And, and, uh, it's kin, it's kinship, it's brotherhood. And, uh, I'm sure thankful that I am, have it with one, one thing that, I'm blessed and I'm lucky is in the fire service and public safety, you, you, we, we go through some shit together with, with my brothers at work and I have it away from work too, you know, and it's pretty crazy to think that I have it at work. I have it in the C10 movement and the C10 nation and, and the family that we have. And, uh, it's a good thing for sure. For sure. Yeah. Anything else? I think we covered most of it. Well, let's. Uh, I'm sure, we forgot some of it, but that's well, all right. I think I went through my list pretty good. Um, oh no, I've got one here in capital letters. Uh-oh. Awesome. <laughs> so let's do this. Well, I'm going to highlight that for the uh, audience. Stay with us. I'm going to go live on uh, Instagram right now, and I thought I would. I'd go live here. So let's see how I put my camera, and let's see what questions we get. If we missed anything, what I wanted to do is we hit pretty much everything and then see what was out there. So I'm going to go live, work through this. Okay, live, and I'm going to hit go live. So we got it right on, Kyle, right now. You're live. He's looking good. We got the build <laughs> behind, and we're live right now. As we, as we kind of bring guys in, I'm going to ask you my highlighted question. I hope I have a good answer on the suspense. This one could be tough. I don't know. I'd like to see how you answer this one. All right, guys. Let me uh, let me flip this here so everybody knows what we're doing. What up? What up? We are uh, we're up here with Kyle right now. Uh, we are we're broadcasting, and I thought this would be something fun to do. Is see what you guys think on the spot. Uh, maybe throw out some questions. So we'll we'll go to answer some of those questions, and uh, I'll kind of read them off. My question, Mr. John Oro just came in, Max built. My question for Kyle right now on, uh, as we record and we're live on, on, uh, Insta Wiener. On the spot, favorite one you've cut down so far? Ooh. Silence. <laughs> There's been a lot. You know what? I like, uh, Johnny G's truck. That one came out pretty, like, I don't think... Blue it, Moon? Blue Moon. Okay. I don't think anybody could get cut lines tighter than that truck. Like, that thing came out tight. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's cool that my boy Johnny owns it. Yeah. So that makes it that much cooler. Yeah, and that's a... Blue Moon's a fun or least favorite. Yeah, we could... I'll hit that one up, Max. <laughs> um, that's cool, too, because there was some stoner love in there. And then Blue Moon, and he just really debuted that at LS Fest. What, two weeks ago, we all went up there. And uh, it's a clean truck. I like the, does this small window make my cab look fat? You know, I mean, uh, you know, you look at those small window trucks and they look really cool, especially with some fatties and some meat on the back. For sure. Yeah, that. so that truck too, kind of cool. Uh, Stoner hit me up the day I put in my two weeks notice, or the day before I was going to put my two weeks notice at my uh, job, the day job. And he's like, uh, yo, I got two trucks, where do I send them? And I've only like Instagram met Stoner at this point, but... Uh, so that was kind of like another push. It's like, all right, I think we're going to be all right. You know, I already got work coming in from other guys, and, you know, Blake's my boy ever since then. Oh, yeah, he's he's right. No, and yeah, then it's cool, did. that truck, uh, Johnny G owned that one, and then the other truck, that 73, uh, Vince at Chopping Block bought that truck, and that truck actually went to SEMA. So both those trucks at Stoner Stent actually, you know, got their hands touched by some cool people. And that truck. They ended up being cool trucks. That's square at SEMA. Uh, didn't didn't Corey build that? Yeah. So Corey bones. built it with yeah. a chopping block chassis. Yeah. That truck is – it was probably one of my favorite trucks at SEMA. Yeah. You know, obviously not, you know, inside. You had the high-end build. You had SSO2. You had uh, 
Tony 64, which was is amazing, and then obviously the creative rods. That, I mean that that truck is that was, one of my favorite that's, trucks. That's one of my favorites. Like yeah. truck of the year this year. That's creative up there. custom. That truck is is amazing. Appreciate and it. and Kyle's on our our panel. He's one of the C10 truck of the year panels, and there's a reason why. He's I think you and I are you and I the only Arizona guys. I'm trying to think if there's Johnny another. G. Oh yeah, Johnny G. Well he's he's, he's half, half and half. Yeah, I count him as half and half. So what's the longest traveled or shipped bedside? We answered that, uh, Bryce. You're going to have to listen to the pod on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's on the pod. So so we're if we get a question that's – so Max Bill asked, what's your least favorite that you've done? And maybe maybe to not, like, be negative, but more of a – it was just hard. You know, like, oh, I didn't care about this truck. I mean, it's just like that thing kicked my ass. Um, we did one, probably like the what, first like five I ever did. Um, Jeremy from Trey Five. It was that white truck that went to SEMA, white with a copper top and copper wheels, probably two years ago, three, two and a half years ago. That was the 67, 68? 67, 67, 68. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a primer truck that we cut down. And, uh, that truck, you know, it was a primer truck. So it had some like body filler hidden in it and stuff. Um, so it just took, I mean, forever. Like I spent way too many hours shorting that one. And at the time, too, that was when I first started charging guys. So, um, you know, I really, really worried about how it would come out. But at the, in the end, it came out great, and we metal finished almost all the body work that was in there. But did you ever get one that when you got into it, you were just like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, a couple we had. So a guy came in from uh, one of the guys. He drove down from Michigan, so he drove down here to have me shortened it during the. He was gonna stay, go on vacation to Disneyland, and then pick it up on the way through. So he calls me up. His wife has a 4Runner. They get a U-Haul trailer to haul all these bedsides. Or not a 4Runner, a RAV4. So like a small SUV. So three hours on their trip, the SUV is having a hard time. It won't go up the grades. Pulling this. <laughs> and, and, and he had, so he had to get, uh, they didn't have like the, whatever, the 8-foot trailer. So he had to get the 16-foot trailer. And it's behind like his wife's little SUV. So then. Like a RAV4. Uh, not Raf. What's the other one? Uh, the Highlander, Toyota Highlander. Maybe it was a Highlander. Yeah. So it wasn't the tiny one, but it wasn't like yeah. the Forerunner. Yeah, it's a Highlander. So it was a Highlander, and uh, so they pull off to Enterprise, leave the whatever Forerunner, Rav Four. What do we call it? Highlander. Highlander. Leave the Highlander there. Rent an F three fifty. Nice. Start going all the way to Phoenix. They bring bring it to Phoenix. Um, we unload them, and the trucks are repaint. You know, it's nice, nice green paint on it, but, uh, you know, shiny, clear coat paint job. And, uh, I cut it down and like, as soon as I put the grinder to it, just like a plume of body filler smoke. And this guy had just went through all that shit to get him to me. And he's in Disneyland. And I'm like, I text him a picture of like me grinding that filler of the piece I cut out. And it's like fucking thick on that back corner. The rest of the bed was solid. It's just that back got munched. And there's pictures of it on the C10 acres page. So basically, I, it's crazy how I had to re-metal work that whole taillight pocket. I cut all that off and re-metal finished it, and we ended up saving it, and it came out to be a nice short bed conversion. But, like, like my heart was broke because the guy just went through all that shit to get the bedsides to me, and then I almost had to, like, say, bro, yeah. we cut up, and now you're fucked. You don't have bedsides, <laughs> and your shit's cut, can and you it's imagine full of filler. What, can you imagine what his wife would have said? Yeah, yeah, so it's all that. But anyways, we saved them. You, you can, if you look deep, it was a, it was a shiny green like that uh, – not seafood on, but like darker green truck. And you can see where I, I posted pictures of how I metal finished the whole tail light like thing. It had a little bit bigger than usual bed scars, but it's still like totally acceptable, way less than most trucks. But uh, we that, ended up that, saving that. That was a challenge. That was a challenge for sure. Does he have a name for that thing? Is it called the Challenger? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Do these have names that we say, that we decide? I think the customer might have named this one the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal, all right. But I don't think we have a name for the white one yet. All right, we have to come up with something. I think it's pretty badass. One of the questions that came through was, what's your, uh, this bro needs a stoner speed shop hat. Calm down. Oh, hey, is I it, got one in did, the truck. Did Barn, did Barn find take your freaking <laughs> over your password again, Blake? Uh, what's your favorite year of truck? Of C10 67 truck. 67 all day. All right. I mean, I know it's the most popular, but that's because it's the best looking one. Over 68? Yeah, no market lights. 67 is the best. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you a fan of the small back window? Not on a 67, 68, or 67. I yeah. like the big window. Yeah, I'm a big window fan, too. For sure. It actually looks good on Johnny. Um, 
I like it when they're when they're lowered with the big big hoops. Yeah, it, it looks pretty good. It looks like, cool. But I'm not, not my fan. favorite, but I like it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Something else came through. Um, it's Goose. He's asking what's in your jug, so I'm telling him Goose. But uh, so so we'll, we'll get ready to take it out here. And, and uh, one other one other guy that of course I thought of that is that's it's, that's we've had some good fun with is you know three dudes one truck. Man, stick. <laughs> so we so might be doing. How about how about when he drove? Uh, he caught us up. He's not human, dude. He pounded like three five hour energies, and and we were off track because of that stinking eclipse, which was fun. But then he freaking literally just drove throughout the night, and we were just out of it. And then the best part was the next day when he's like out of it with his little pillow, and he, he's like getting direct sunlight just hanging out that passenger side. <laughs> oh, that guy's awesome. How much fun was that? It's, it's too much fun. Oh, my God. Um, so we might be doing part two. Well, yeah. We'll see what happens. It depends on what happens with babies and everything else, but yeah. So I, I got a, you know, extra long bed. I got a longhorn for me, waiting for me in uh, Indy. Yeah. Um, Scott Hampton. Me oh, yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, I'm yeah, in yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. stick, too. But it'll be... Uh, I'm going to own, or I already do own, an extra long bed. I'm going to leave it that way. So then I can't get a hate for that, right? You're going to leave that, the long one? I'm going to leave it extra long. Okay. For how long? Because I don't, I don't believe No, nah, I'll probably leave it that way. I, I'll probably, I want to lower one of those because I think it's just going to look stupid long when it's lowered. I've never seen one lowered. Cool. But that, that'll be the next adventure. Yeah, so Shampton uh, ends up buying, getting him a... Uh, Longhorn. Yeah, he asked me if I could cut it down, and I was like, "Hey, I've actually kind of been wanting one of those because I figure I can haul long bed sides in that truck too, and shut the tailgate. So like for running around, running back and forth the trucks I cut, you know, it'd it actually be a good work truck. Yeah, and you could fit them; they'll definitely fit in there. You yeah, know, sure. you know they'll fit, and the tailgate will shut nice, or yeah. the tailgate will open nice and smooth. Yeah. For uh, um, dollar Ben Dollar asked what if you were going to learn what's an easy one to learn on if there was such a thing. Um. Square body is probably going to be your easiest one if you're going to do one for the first time. Does the metal, um, the metal to me on a square seems thinner than a 6772? It is a little bit thinner, but um, the cut lines are a lot more straightforward on the square body. And, uh, you know, the, the fit up of the two when you cut them is like very little work needs to be done. Where you really got to finesse a 6772 to get everything like smooth. Yeah, especially the way it's rounded. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a part as we look at the the white truck here? Is there an area where you you kind of hold your breath there? You, you're just like okay, like when I look at the top, the way that the rounded comes into that seam, I feel like there's some transitions there that. Yeah, and that's why we cut it that way. And you know, in the beginning, you know, the first Can we time show you... that truck. Show it. Okay. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Get the water bottle out. So that's the 68, and there's the 66. And if you look, there's a pretty sweet little diesel motor right there. All the way up, there's a diesel motor. So do you use, what do you use to, to cut it? Just a cutoff wheel. Okay. Nothing fancy. Really? Yeah, everybody thinks just because, like, you can do something like that, you need expensive or fancy tools. It's all about, like, repetition and doing it it's not about the tools cool i mean a guy could do this with a eight dollar harbor freight cut up wheel if you wanted all right i got you out right here so we're going to take uh we're going to take the boys out uh that was fun is there any way i can get 33s on a two-wheel drive 86 c10 anyone uh try yeah. it and let us know <laughs> yeah you can get anything on there you just got to do a lot of cutting cut away if you don't cut it the wheels will rip it off so however you want to <laughs> do it and if it's an 86 C10, there's plenty of them out there, so uh, good luck. Who uh, I did see an OBS, a guy, no, an NBS, a guy has some, like, 32 or 33 stuffed under a tool drive where uh, we get parts. To, remember we went to that guy? Remember we went to the junkyard? Remember, oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that guy's yeah, yeah. NBS at GMC was, like, those had to be, like, 32s. Yeah, I put, I put back when I was, like, you know, about all about the dirt bike life and stuff. I put like 35s on a two-wheel drive. Oh, yeah, dude. With like just a spindle lift. Hooped you that thing out. Yeah. What up, Terry? I see you. Uh, you got any oranges on those on those trees? Hell, yeah, we do. Come get them. If I'm going to give oranges out, it's going to be to you and Bree. Uh, sweet, I'll keep you updated. All right. That was Stephen, Stephen Ray White. He's the one looking to put 33s on there. Stoner, suck it! 
Tell Barnfine to get off your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're out. Thanks, guys. I hope you like this. We're still recording, so uh, we're going to take it out. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to end live. I want to hit the button. Kyle's out. One of the greatest there is. End live video. Share it to the world. And uh, for you guys listening on the pod still, we're an uh, hour and 40, so plenty to, plenty in there. We had a good time. Um, I know that you know you and I go back like a little brother I never had. Uh, I know I bounce a ton of stuff off you. I trust you with my life. And uh, it's just as much as you have conveyed to, that you wanted to be on here. It's, 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 it's probably like, uh, you know, like I said, like a big brother to me for you. It's that much, if not more, for me to have you on my show. That means a lot, bro. We're out. <laughs> Suck it, stoner. <laughs> Later.